The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me What's going on, everyone? It's a Tuesday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Youngstown. If you're in the market for a new or slightly used automobile, Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town is the place to go. They've got a great sales department, they've got a great service department, and they've got a fantastic finance department. And that's important because you don't want to pay out the ass in interest rates especially if your credit is really good. That's the reason why you want your credit to be good so you don't have a high interest rate when you're taking out a loan to buy your car. Greenwood Chevrolet has all three of them. They've got a fantastic sales department, a fantastic finance department, and a supremely great service department. It all adds up to only one place to shop for a new or slightly used automobile, and that would be the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. With you till 3 o'clock, at which time DJ and the boys will do Power Hour. Coming up on the program today, we will catch up with Vindicator and Tribune Chronicle Sports Editor Doug Chapin. Uh, he'll be coming in at 1 o'clock via the MVP, Vivo, MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. At 2 o'clock, we will hear from the voice of the YSU Penguins, Rob Schmidt, YSU lost two times to Cleveland State. Darius Quisenberry out both games. DQ is day to day, and that is a um, that is not a good thing. I don't like hearing this day to day stuff when we're talking about someone as important as Darius Quisenberry. Hopefully, he comes back for uh, Friday and Saturday against Green Bay. Uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, by the way. Uh, Beagley will be hopping on Friday and Saturday. A pair of games on Friday. Uh, the YSU women will be in action against Wright State. That game will start at 1 o'clock. The YSU men will be in action against Green Bay. That game will start at 4 o'clock. And then on Saturday, 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock, Wright State uh, and uh, the YSU women, the back half of their uh, two-gamer. And Green Bay will continue their two-game series uh, with Youngstown State. And again, because of COVID, this is how they're going to be doing this. And in the month of January, uh, all of the games are going to be Friday and Saturday. So uh, I don't know if we're going to be seeing a lot of doubleheaders uh, with the men and the women, but Fridays and Saturdays in the month of January, that is when the two games are going to be played when the Penguins are home at Beagley. Friday and Saturday will be the two days uh, when they're at home. So there you go. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We made mention, or at least Dana Bolish did, when we had him on yesterday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Joe Simon, who, by the way, is a sports reporter at the Tribune and has been one for the last 16 years, uh, Joe Simon will not be available for football uh, covering anything for the Tribune. Joe Simon is the new head football coach at Liberty High School, and this, of course, is pending board approval when they meet on January the 11th. Simon graduated from Liberty in 2000, and he has been an assistant coach for the Leopards 
uh, back in uh, 2008 uh, all the way up to 2014. He joined Haiti Haiti uh, when Haiti got the job in Letonia, and he was there for two years. Uh, in the last four years, uh, Simon has been an assistant coach at Warren Harding High School, and Joe Simon will come in replacing Chet Allen. Uh, Chet stepped down after six years as head coach of the Liberty Leopards. So uh, Joe Simon, pending board approval, and they meet on January the 11th. Joe Simon will be the new head football coach at Liberty. So in, in, in regards to the jobs that are currently open, Valley Christian is open, Boardman's open, Poland is open, and I believe there's one other school in the area uh, where the job is, the head football coaching job is open. So there are plenty of uh, plenty of jobs that are still open, and we'll see what uh, shakes down when uh, Boardman and Poland decide to name their new head coaches when we go into the new uh, year. Uh, and I'm I'm going to assume that it's going to be uh, not too far into the new year when Boardman and Poland and Valley Christian and the rest of the Football jobs that are open, those jobs will uh, they'll fill a vacancy very, very quickly. All right, basketball last night. Uh, Larry and I had an opportunity to peek in on the Crestview Lowellville game. To give you an idea just how good Crestview played defensively last night, they scored more points in the fourth quarter than Lowellville scored the entire game. Rebels held Lowellville to 17 points the entire game. Meanwhile, Crestview, who was held to 26 points after three quarters, scored 21 in the final quarter. And it all added up to a 47-17 victory for Crestview. Both teams laying down some serious defense. Uh, Crestview did it the entire night. Lowellville did it for about three quarters. Again, the fourth quarter, was it, it got out of hand pretty quickly. Uh, but both teams were were playing a variation of a 2-3 and a 1-2-2 zone defense uh, where turnovers can be a plenty, especially if you bait the other team into skip passes. Now, a skip pass is when you go from left wing to right wing or cross-court passes. Uh, in, in a 1-2-2 zone defense or in a 2-3, when the defenders are active and their hands are up, damn near impossible to throw a skip pass or a cross-court pass. And unfortunately, both teams tried to do it uh, in the first three quarters, and it resulted in a ridiculous amount of turnovers. And and that was more defense than anything else. And Lowellville is a young team, and they're, they're most definitely going to get a whole lot better. They need size in the worst way. And Crestview is a more veteran team. And boy, I'll tell you, when they get the inside-outside game going, that is a really, really difficult team to defend, and uh, they, they certainly got it involved in the, uh, in the fourth quarter when they outscored Lowellville 21-4. to uh, We'll peek in on the Rebels game against Heartland Christian tonight uh, at Rebels Gymnasium. This game last night was in Lowellville, and absolutely love broadcasting games in Lowellville. They get the balcony. Uh, it's, it's second level above the, uh, above the first floor. And it's really, uh, really nice. The same thing in, in Crestview. The balcony is there, and that's where we're going to be uh, broadcasting tonight's game from at Rebels Gym uh, between Crestview and Heartland Christian. Also, uh, some other games, and uh, plenty of games that were held in South Range at the uh, South Range Holiday Tournament. Western Reserve gets a big win over Salem in overtime. This is a D4 team. Knocking off a D2, a very good, I might add, very good D2 team. Western Reserve is no joke, kids. They've uh, they've padded their schedule with some very tough non-conference games. And to this point, six for six, uh, they're playing quite well, thank you very much. They knock off a very good Salem team last night, 39 to 36. Actually, yesterday afternoon, 39 to 36 in overtime. Marlington uh, improved their record to 8-0 and on the campaign. They knock off Ursland 42-33. to Now, Ursland won't see Marlington in the uh, tournament because Ursland is D3, where Marlington is D2. I will say this. Depending on 
which two district tournaments are smashed together? Because we are going to have the supersize uh, tournaments, just like in the fall. Uh, we are going to have supersized tournaments. And depending on which district tournament uh, the D2 girls are going to be put along with, you could very well see Marlington, Cardinal Mooney, Salem, West Branch, Poland. In other words, D2 is going to be absolutely positively stacked with some really, really good basketball teams. Uh, and the D2 girls tournament could be something to behold. Uh, it, will, uh, it will certainly be an awful lot of fun. Marlington moves to 8-0 on the campaign with a nine-point victory over Ursland. Uh, let's see, some other games. Uh, Hoban uh, defeated Nordonia 77-46. Now, I believe the Hoban girls are D1. I don't believe they're D2. I believe Hoban girls are, uh, are D1. And the other game in the holiday tournament, South Range stepping up in competition. Boardman's D1. South Range is D3. The Raiders double up Boardman 72-36. to And again, you talk about D2 being fun. Check out D3. Now, I'm going to assume, and I'll go out on a ledge because I'm, I'm almost positive that this is going to happen. The two district tournaments that will get smashed together in the super size with the um, D3 tournament, you'll have the D3 tournament for Mahoning and Columbiana counties. I don't think there's any D3 team. No, there are a smattering of D3 teams in Columbiana County. I believe Crestview is one of them, duh. Um and then the D3 tournament that is normally for the Trumbull County teams along with the, the uh, Ashtabula County teams and the, and the Portage or, or Geauga County teams. It, 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 up there, the northern part. Uh, I got to believe that those two districts will combine into one supersized district. And, oh, dear God, you, you want to talk about uh, D2 being uh, pretty cool. D3 will be just as impressive. Keep in mind, Ursuline is going to be Division Three, And yes, they're 3-2, and two, uh, but as always, Ursuline pumps up their schedule and they play D2 and D1 programs. Uh, this D3 tournament is going to be very difficult as well. Uh, come tournament time, and again, you, you normally you see under normal circumstances, pre-COVID, you see the district tournaments, and I believe D4 boys, uh, you play uh, in Grand Valley, and you play at the Fieldhouse in Struthers. D3, uh, I believe it's, um, oh God, Warren Harding High School, and Salem. D2, everyone converges into Boardman. D1, who the hell knows? Uh, it, it varies every single year. And it even varies whether or not Boardman, Fitch, and Harding uh, are in the same district. The last couple of years, uh, or at least last year, they were in the same district. I believe two years ago they were not in the same district, let alone the same region. So, uh, it, it yeah, it, it varies. This year, we're told that you're going to have two districts combined into one supersized district, and man, oh man, is the talent going to be unbelievable. And when the talent is unbelievable, uh, the chances of teams getting out of their district, depending on where they go, uh, that's going to be unbelievable as well. Uh, you're you're going to have to play some damn good basketball uh, to get out of your district in a supersized format. You're just really going to have to play some ungodly basketball. Uh, in an ungodly in a good way, of course. Uh, Poland getting a victory over Fitch yesterday. They uh, moved their record to 6-1. and one. Western Reserve is playing Poland, and this could be fun. Uh, you got a 6-0 and oh Western Reserve team, a 6-1 and one Poland team. Uh, this, this could be an awful lot of fun. And again, kudos, mega kudos to every program. And I'd, South Range has done this. Western Reserve has done this. Uh, the two Catholic schools do it every single year. Mega, mega kudos to every single coach and AD that jacks up their schedule 
and plays the best of the best of the best. And I just think that is so incredibly important, especially if you think you have a team that has a chance to make a rather long journey into the postseason. Regular season records should not mean squat. They just shouldn't. Regular season records and championships, now obviously a a, a divisional championship, a conference championship, uh, and I'll give South Range uh, an example because their basketball program, their girls' basketball program is crazy good. And and truth be told, they really don't have to jack up their non-conference schedule all that much because, as everyone knows, South Range is the smallest school enrollment-wise, and frankly, it's not even close. South Range is the smallest enrollment school in the Northeast State. So in theory, they're moving their schedule up on a day-in, day-out basis. I mean, let's be honest for a second. South Range is no bigger than Crestview, and here they are going up against much, much bigger schools. Hubbard, Lakeview, Struthers, Girard, you know the rest, Niles. So the idea that oh, we're also going to improve our non-conference schedule. By the way, we're going to throw out Division I Hoban. Uh, we're going to play Division I Boardman. We're going to uh, just da-da-da-da-da-da. They're, they're stacking their schedule. I love it. I absolutely love it. First of all, you'll be the most prepared team going into the playoffs because you'll have seen much better competition, at least in theory, because the higher the division you go, the better the competition. Now, you can argue that there are some Division Four teams that could very well pose to be a much, much better problem than a D2 or a D1. Not too many schools, unfortunately. But, but you can argue that. I love the fact that there are schools that understand, hey, look, you know, we understand we'll fight for a league championship. And if you're in the Northeast State, the Mahoning Valley Athletic Conference, Gray or Scarlet Tier, the EOAC, it doesn't matter what conference you're in. You'll fight for a conference title. Those things are important, no question about that. But the non-conference schedule, you jack that bad boy up. You put that, not all, not every team, because you don't want your team physically beaten by the time the, the tournament comes around, but you want to have some challenges in the non-conference schedule, especially if you're a large school in your conference. Now, if you're a smaller school in your conference, you don't necessarily have to jack your uh, non-conference schedule up too much, but it's always good if you half of your non-conference schedule games are against some teams that are bigger and pose a problem for you. More importantly, uh, if you're going up against a team that tends to play matchup zone, a team that tends to play straight man, a team that tends to play full court press every square foot of the floor, you want to try to get as much variety as humanly possible because, well, when you come tournament time, you will have seen every part of of a defense or every part of an offense. And this is why I absolutely love what Coach Fischel and South Range is doing. Absolutely love it. And I think that that it will serve them extremely well come postseason. It'll, it'll serve them extremely well. First of all, I think that they're going to be one of the favorites to win the Northeast State along with Poland. Uh, and, and you might be able to throw in one of the Trumbull County schools. But come tournament time, South Range is going to be a D3, and I will guarantee you, you can count on one hand the amount of teams in the super size tournament that are going to have the same kind of a schedule as South Range. You may be able to count it on one finger, or you may not be able to use any digits. And like I said before, it doesn't matter what your record is. Okay, as long as you're competitive in the in your conference. You want to win a conference championship, assuming you're playing 14 games, eight-team league, 14 games, conference title. Uh, you want to win about 11 or 12 of, those, 12 of those games. So let's say you go 15 and 7. In a normal season, 15 and 7. 
15 and 7, but you challenged your kids to the point where they're ready for the tournament. 15 and 7, uh, and you played this ridiculous schedule? Yeah. I- I'm going to take my chances on you making a lengthy tournament run. Because I think 15 and 7 with a really tough schedule against the best of the best is going to be far better than 20 and 2 or 21 and 1 with a cream puff schedule. It just makes more sense that way. By the way, uh, big news, which um, I will have to uh, say that I was wrong yesterday. Ben Roethlisberger is sitting. And um, Mason Rudolph will be uh, quarterbacking the Steelers uh, on Sunday against the Browns. Now, I think that the reason why this was uh, this was done, and I had a conversation, a brief one, albeit, uh, with Aditi Kinkabwala, uh, a um, friend of the show. And I reached out to her about uh, 10 minutes before the show. And she made a comment that kind of makes sense. Steelers really de- never got a proper buy. I mean, they took some time off, but they didn't have a buy per se. They played, I believe, a, um, a Monday game. And then they played nine days later on a Wednesday. I think that's how it went. Either that or a Sunday game, and then they played uh, uh, and, and then they played on a Wednesday. They didn't have a bye week, per se, where they had a, two weeks off. You, you had the you, you, you play a game, you take a week off, and then 14 days later, you're playing another game. They never had that. And because of that, I think that's the reason why Roethlisberger is going to sit and Mason Rudolph is going to be the quarterback on Sunday. The other reason, and this might very well come to pass now, knowing full well that the Steelers have just done this. As I flip my uh, paper around, i got to make sure that I'm, I'm reading this right. They've pretty much forfeited the second seed. They've conceded the second seed to the Bills, who kicked the absolute crap out of the Patriots. And uh, that that smile that you might have seen last night, oh, yeah, that was mine. And I wanted Buffalo to put 50 on those guys so bad. Uh, it, but you know what? 38-9 to nine is cool. I'm good with it. It was, it was an ass-kicking on national TV, and I absolutely loved it. And it was a lot of fun to see. Uh, and it was a good time. So Buffalo and Pittsburgh are both 12-3 and three because the Bills have the tiebreaker. Right now they have the two seed. Pittsburgh has the three seed. The only way Pittsburgh gets the two and Buffalo gets the three is if the Steelers beat the Browns on Sunday and the Bills lose to the Dolphins. And that might still happen. It might still happen. But with Roethlisberger not starting, pretty good case that the Browns are going to beat Pittsburgh. Pretty good chance. Pretty good chance of that happening. So let's assume for a second that that does happen. And let's assume for a second, now that Pittsburgh has said, yeah, we're not going to start our franchise quarterback, now let's see what McDermott does in Buffalo. Personally, Bills have already had a bye week. And they're a Hail Mary from a nine-game winning streak. There's no way in hell I'm resting anybody I, I I as far as I'm concerned this team is playing great football right now I ain't resting anybody now if they start blowing out Miami and it's to the point where there's no way in hell Miami can come back all right you sit your regulars the rest of the day but I ain't sitting anybody if I'm McDermott I'm not sitting anybody and and if that's the case Miami's playing for their playoff life right now Cleveland is playing for their playoff life right now. Now, if Miami loses, they're not in that bad a shape, provided somebody loses, because they hold all the tiebreakers. They got a better conference record than everybody. Uh, it, it, of all the 10 and 5 teams, they got a better conference record than everybody. Hence the reason why, you know, they're, they're going to be in pretty good shape. There is a chance. If Pittsburgh does, in fact, lose 
to Cleveland. And again, the, the news that is just breaking is Roethlisberger is going to sit. And you're going to get uh, uh, the backup quarterback will be playing in, in, uh, in week 17. If Pittsburgh loses... All right, so the Browns would then finish 11 and 5. 11 and 5 for the Browns. Right now they're the 7 seed. 11 and 5 for the Browns. Things really don't change all that much unless of course the Titans happen to lose to Houston and Indianapolis beats Jacksonville. If that's the case, well, Indianapolis wins the division. Tennessee is out. Actually, it, it wouldn't even it wouldn't even change the Browns' status. They would still be uh, the seven seed. The only the only way the Browns get out of the seven seed is if they were to win, and Baltimore or Miami were to lose, then Cleveland would go up a seed. Right now, as it stands, if the playoffs were to be held right now, Cleveland's first-round opponent would be Buffalo. Pittsburgh's first-round opponent would be Baltimore. And the Titans would be playing the Dolphins. Now, a lot of stuff can change. Assuming that Buffalo doesn't sit anybody, and they might not, Miami's going to have a harder time beating the Bills. Now, of course, it's, again, with the Steelers sitting uh, Roethlisberger, now they've pretty much said, hey, look, you know, we got to give our franchise quarterback a break here. Uh, so we're, we're going to give him the week off. And next week he comes back. So there's the, he's going to have essentially a bye week. And the Steelers didn't have a bye week all year long. They they got their bye week screwed because of the Titans. And by the way, in a in a karma type of world, and hopefully the football gods, small G, will take care of this. In a karma kind of world, Tennessee gets upset by Houston. Indianapolis defeats Jacksonville, and the Dolphins, Ravens, and Browns all win. In a karma world, Tennessee gets knocked on their ass and out of the playoffs altogether, and it would be fitting given the fact that they screwed a lot of teams. The Steelers and the Bills right at the top of the list. It would be nice if that were to happen. The chances of that happening, eh, like that. So let's assume for a second the Steelers do uh, lose to the Browns. Browns are 11 and 5. Do they stay at the 7? Eh, not necessarily. I mean, uh let's see. The Bills uh, they could beat the the uh Well, they could beat the uh, uh the Bra- the Dolphins. They could beat the Bills. Absolutely they could. All right, so both teams would be 12 and 4. The Bills would still be the 2 seed. Uh the Steelers would remain the 3 seed. If that is the case, uh Cleveland goes up 1. Miami goes back to the seven, assuming that Tennessee or Baltimore, I'm sorry, Tennessee or Indianapolis lose. If they don't, then Tennessee would be the four, Baltimore would be the five, Cleveland would be the six, and Indianapolis would be the seven. Browns and Steelers would play each other one week later. And this time, Steelers would have their franchise quarterback in the lineup instead of their backup quarterback. Now, if Cleveland doesn't get the job done, then they have to hope for a Baltimore-Indianapolis or actually, Baltimore is, is out because they have the tiebreakers. Uh, it, it wouldn't. It, it, Cleveland would be screwed if they lose to the Steelers unless Tennessee or Indianapolis lost, because they hold the tiebreakers head to head 
against both Tennessee and Indianapolis. They beat both of them in the regular season. So if the Browns were to lose to the Steelers, Mason Rudolph quarterbacking the Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger is sitting. That according to the uh, uh, according to the uh, Steelers, uh, Mike Tomlin. Um, I want to say about ten minutes ago, fifteen minutes ago, in his press conference, uh, just announced this. And again, given the fact Pittsburgh has not had a bye week, okay, kind of sort of understand. I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I kind of sort of understand because they didn't have a bye week. So if the Browns lose to Mason Rudolph. The only way they get into the playoffs is if Tennessee or Indianapolis lose. If Tennessee or Indianapolis loses, then the Browns would, in all likelihood, get the seven seed. And they would stay where they are. And um, again, depending on uh, what happens to the Bills, let's say Buffalo loses to Miami then the Steelers would be the two, the Bills would be the three. Uh, If Tennessee wins, they're the four. If Indianapolis wins, they're the four. Assuming one of these teams loses. Uh, The Dolphins would be the five, the Ravens would be the six, and the Browns would be the seven. And the Browns would wind up playing the Steelers. No, now actually they'd play the Bills because uh, no, they'd play the, they they would play the Steelers because the Steelers beat the Browns, the Bills lost to the to the Dolphins. They would play the Steelers. The only way the Browns don't play the Steelers in the first round next week is if both Buffalo and Pittsburgh either win or lose. If the if the Bills and Steelers both win, it would appear Buffalo would play Cleveland, assuming Cleveland can get into the playoffs. And the only way they can uh, is a Tennessee or an Indianapolis loss. If Buffalo and Pittsburgh both lose, all right, the Steelers are still the three seed. Dolphins are 11 and 5, Browns are 11 and 5. Ravens, I'm going to assume that they can beat Cincinnati. They would be 11 and 5. Uh the Browns would still be the 7. Uh they would play the Bills. Uh, they would play the Bills if both the Bills and the Steelers lost. If the uh Bills and the Steelers both won, uh Again, uh, depending on what Tennessee and and Indianapolis do, if one of those teams loses, Bills would play the Browns because the Browns would be the seven seed. There is a chance that the Steelers and the Browns could play each other uh, in the first round of the playoffs. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But, uh, again, because the Steelers, uh, they don't have a bye week. They didn't have a bye week this week. Let me run down this this, – schedule of theirs and and this was because of Tennessee and again uh Tennessee uh, wreaked havoc on not only the uh the Steelers schedule uh two of the three losses that the Bills have this year thanks in large part to Tennessee and the National Football League uh screwing around with with what happened uh, the Steelers were supposed to have played the Titans earlier in the season, and they didn't. Uh, it was supposed to have been October the 4th, and then the bye week was supposed to have been October the 25th. Now, in fairness, the Steelers did get a bye, but it was October the 4th, four games into the season, uh, or three games into the season. They took the fourth week off. That's not a, really a bye. I mean, yeah, they didn't play anybody, but it's it's not really – a buy per se. And then they had to play every single game since October the 11th. So the Steelers have played, what is it, a grand total of 12 games. Uh, 
since having the 4th of October off, they've had to play a grand total of 12 games. So even though they had a bye on October the 4th, it really wasn't a bye in the right place. The bye was supposed to be October the 25th. And because of that, uh, and they've played 12 consecutive games, Tomlin is pretty much wanting to give his franchise quarterback the, the, the week off. And, and who could blame him? I mean, you know, they already won the division. They've already got the, the, the two or the three. With Buffalo's win last night, uh, it, it's you know pretty obvious. The Steelers are going to get the two or the three. The Bills are going to get the two or the three. The two things that are obvious right now, Kansas City is stuck at the one. The conference goes through Kansas City as long as Kansas City is in the playoffs. And the Tennessee Titans or the Indianapolis Colts, whoever wins this division, is going to have the four. Those are the two things that we that we know for sure. The rest of it, up in the air. The rest of it is up in the air. But there is a chance uh, that come Saturday, January the 9th, or Sunday, January the 10th, the Browns and Steelers could be playing each other again. Uh, but the big news of the day, and it broke about uh, 15, 20 minutes ago, Ben Roethlisberger will be sitting. Mason Rudolph will be the starting quarterback. And again, I thought, hey, you know, these guys, they get the two seed to play for, but they haven't had a bye week. Uh, the, their, quote, bye week was week four of the season and not, uh, what was it supposed to be, uh, week seven. So, in, in essence, they have played 12 consecutive games since taking off on uh, October the 4th. They've played 12 consecutive games. So, that's the reason why Roethlisberger is going to sit. And, and I'm sure that there's going to be some other guys uh, that are going to sit as well. And, and it'll be interesting to see what the, uh, what the Bills decide to do. Uh, again, with Buffalo, uh, you, you, Pittsburgh is all but conceded the two seed to them. Assuming, of course, that Cleveland doesn't show up and can't beat a backup quarterback, uh, which, well, they didn't beat the Jets, and, you know, well, again, without their receivers, and I think COVID had a lot to do with that, but uh, football's a funny game. Uh, the bye week for the Bills was the 22nd, so in essence, they've played five straight games after having a bye on the, uh, on the 22nd, so it, Really, and and this is a young team. I mean, I, do they do they play their regulars the entire game? I, I don't know. If I were the Bills, uh, if, if I were in McDermott shoes, I would, because this team is rolling right now. And I, you know, I'm I'm a big believer. Hey, if you're on a roll, keep doing what you're doing. Have some fun. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. But we'll see what happens. But anyway. Um, Mason Rudolph will be your starting quarterback on Sunday uh, when the Steelers come to Cleveland to take on the Browns, and hence the reason, uh, and I guess the uh, wise guys, uh, they, they know. Uh, they, they obviously know what's going on. The number for the Browns uh, when this line started was four. Uh, that line has shot up a half a point since the announcement was made that Roethlisberger will be the starting quarterback instead of Mason Rudolph. That number is now, it was at seven this morning. It is now up to seven and a half. So the Browns are favored by seven and a half points over the Steelers uh, now that it's been announced officially by Coach Tomlin uh, that Ben Roethlisberger will be on the bench and Mason Rudolph will be your starting quarterback on Sunday. Be curious to see how many of the... Um, how many of the franchise quarterbacks with a uh, with a division and a seed already in place, how many of these guys are going to be sitting? Now, in the NFC, uh, New Orleans is still up for a, um, uh, a top seed. Green Bay has not clinched a top seed. And interestingly enough, uh, Green Bay is playing Chicago, and the Bears have an awful lot to play for. Uh, they're playing for their playoff life, as it as it turns out. Uh, so are the Los Angeles Rams, I might add. The Rams are playing Arizona, and the winner of that game uh, could very well get into the playoffs. The loser of that game 
uh, could very well go home. And a little spice to this, Jared Goff busted his thumb or uh, did something to his thumb where they had to do some surgery on him, and he's out for this game. So this is going to be real interesting to see what happens over in the NFC side. But nobody, you know, the top seed is not is is not uh, sewed up, so it's up for grabs. One would imagine that New Orleans and Green Bay they're going to be playing all their regulars because, like, unlike Kansas City, you know, Kansas City they've uh, they've sewed up the top seed, so they don't necessarily have to play their regulars although they're not playing next week, so that would be two weeks off. You'd probably want to play your regulars at least the first half of the game against the uh, the Chargers on Sunday, but it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. We'll take a timeout, be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point Presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Back in a bit. 21 News. Let's get right to our top story tonight. More experienced reporters. A new Wilmington arrest. In Lordstown. Telling more local stories. We'll look at efforts Boy to is curb. recovering from a broken. Around our Good valley. Good afternoon here in Youngstown. Right because you expect. It's important for everyone. No place like home. More local news. In Mercer County Court. 21 News is our valley's number one local news. Welcome home to a home made homey with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. Attention football fans, order Coca's Pizza tailgate package for only $54.99. You'll receive 24 slices of our delicious cheese pizza, 20 jumbo wings, and two of our famous foot-long pepperoni rolls. Coca's Pizza, we serve it hot. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student athletes in the Valley. Your Armstrong services are more important than ever. There are more and more connected devices in the home these days. To get the most out of your experience, you need a network that is always getting better. You deserve superior performance, and that's what Armstrong offers every day. Whether you're working from home, enjoying your favorite content together, or simply catching up while apart, count on Armstrong to keep you connected to what matters most. in looking at the tracks because I wanted my green shorts because I've been going there for 20 years I think whenever we go there whatever car we're looking for they have tremendous inventory if you're looking for people who care about you Greenwood is is a place to go you know it's like family there the girls know me in service it's Miss Kim in the Tahoe I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because they really went the extra mile for me now we're going the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet for heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoning Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Points on YSNlive.com. Ron Potesta with you. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. On the network today, going on as we speak, uh, the Western Reserve girls are in Poland as they're taking on the Poland Bulldogs. Keep in mind, Western Reserve played Salem yesterday. So this is a, a back-to-backer against two of the more prominent Division II programs uh, in this area, Western Reserve, a D4 team. And I absolutely love this schedule uh, by Western Reserve. They're challenging their kids, and this should be a fun game. 
Uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon, Hoban is playing Boardman. This is part of the South Range Holiday Classic. Anthony Hartwig is broadcasting these games on the network. I believe he broadcast the game today between Salem and Ursland. That game was played at 10 o'clock this morning. We'll see if we can get a final score uh, from that particular game. 5 o'clock this afternoon, Nordonia will be playing the host school of this holiday tournament, South Range. Uh, there's a triangular match in uh, wrestling going on at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon. This would be junior high wrestling. Edison, Minerva, and Southern uh, all involved in uh, some junior high wrestling at 4 o'clock. Uh, varsity wrestling at, at Edison. Uh, Edison taking on Wellsville. That game will start at 6 o'clock. That match, I should say, not a game. The match will start at 6 o'clock. Boys basketball tonight on the network from Fitch High School. Alliance takes a trip into Austin Town as they take on Coach Beanie and the Falcons. 7 o'clock airtime, uh, somewhere around 7 o'clock. As we have always said, uh, in a 7 o'clock game time, it's really scheduled. JV game starts at 5.30. And the varsity game is held hostage uh, courtesy of how fast or how slow the JV game goes. But the scheduled time somewhere around 7 o'clock. Fitch hosting Alliance. Beaver Local will be hosting East Liverpool. That should be a fun game. Uh, these two schools they don't necessarily like each other. <laughs> the two schools down in southern Columbiana County separated by about, I don't know, five or six miles they don't necessarily like each other. Uh, Camel will be hosting LeBray in boys basketball. That game will be played in Camel, uh, 7 o'clock start. Canfield in Poland, the back half of their 224 matchup. Uh, this one will be in Canfield. Crestview will be hosting Heartland Christian. LeBray hosting Mineral Ridge. Salem will be hosting McDonald in boys basketball. All of those games, uh, Fitch Alliance, Beaver Local East Liverpool, Camel LeBray, Canfield Poland, Crestview Heartland Christian, LeBray Mineral Ridge, Salem McDonald, all of these games, a 7 o'clock scheduled start. Uh, so it's about 20 minutes at the conclusion of the JV game, somewhere around 7 o'clock. We can tell you for certain all of these games, the junior varsity will start at 5.30. JV will start at 5.30. The varsity games in these seven contests somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 o'clock. Could be a couple minutes before, a couple minutes after, uh, but certainly um, go to uh, YSNlive.com uh, and your favorite team. Uh, so if you're a Austin Town Fitch fan, it would be YSNlive.com slash Austin Town Fitch. And your, your program should be up somewhere around 7 o'clock. Uh, so do check out uh, the, some of the games today. And, of course, thanks uh, very, very much to the good folks at WRS Wealth Advisors. Uh, they have put forth a generous contribution, and that allows you, the fans, to watch every single game at no charge. Every single game during the basketball season uh, is free, courtesy of the wonderful, wonderful people at WRS Wealth Advisors. Uh, they uh, gave us a, a really nice contribution in enabling you, the fans, to be able to partake in uh, watching a basketball game without any charge. And uh, many, many thanks again to the folks at WRS Wealth Advisors and Insurance Solutions. 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. Again, the big story coming out of Pittsburgh, the Steelers announced oh, about 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago, that Mason Rudolph is your starting quarterback. Ben Roethlisberger will be sitting uh, no other word in terms of who is going to be, who else is going to be sitting. My guess is you, you want Ben to be healthy and you want Ben to be uh, strong uh, when the postseason starts. And, and again, the Steelers, they're going to have the two or the three, depending on what happens this week. Uh, they could get the two with a, a victory over Cleveland, a Buffalo loss to Miami. 
the Steelers would have the two seed, the Bills would have the three seed. Any other combination, Buffalo has the two seed. Uh, If the Bills win, it doesn't matter if the Steelers win or lose, Buffalo has the two seed. Uh, If the Bills lose and the Steelers lose, Buffalo has the two seed. The only way the Steelers get the two seed is if Pittsburgh wins and Buffalo loses on Sunday. Uh, Pittsburgh's playing the Browns. Buffalo's playing Miami. Both Miami and Cleveland are just fighting for their collective playoff lives, and they pretty much both need to uh, to win this game on Sunday. And, and again, with the Steelers deciding that Mason Rudolph will start, it doesn't necessarily give the Browns that clinching moment. I mean, I, I hate to say this, and, and uh, our, my good friend and uh, former colleague, Ryan Alessio, uh, a great, great take on his part. Mason Rudolph is starting, but keep in mind, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is when receivers are running free with no one within 20 yards of them. That's spot on. I, I mean, uh, okay, Mason Rudolph is starting at quarterback. Well, it doesn't <laughs> – who cares? Because if he can get the ball to Schuster and some of these other guys and the defense isn't doing anything, it doesn't matter who your quarterback is. An NFL quarterback, given the amount of time and protection, uh, will tear apart any defense. And and I hate to bring this up, but the Browns fans know this. Your back seven is trash. It just is. I, I mean, it's you know this isn't this isn't a shot at any, anyone. It's truth. Even when Ward is in the lineup, your back seven is trash. So it's you're going to have to play a really good game defensively in order to win this ball game. Now, I think the Browns will be able to put up some points on the Steelers, especially if the receivers are able to play on Sunday. And I think they will be able to play uh, on Sunday. And I think the, the Browns will put up points on this defense. The question is, can the Browns' defense – withstand the Steelers' offense. If they can, Browns are going to be in the playoffs. And there's a pretty good chance you'll have a rematch. There's a pretty good chance that you'll have a rematch. Let's throw this out here. Let's say that Pittsburgh does, in fact, lose to, to uh, Cleveland. All right, Browns are 11-5. and five. Uh, the Steelers are uh, twelve and four. They're they're the three. There's no two ways about it. Uh, if the Bills lose to the Dolphins, okay, uh, the Dolphins and the Browns are both ten and six. Miami gets the tiebreaker. Uh, or actually, no, uh, uh, Miami Miami and Cleveland would both be eleven and five. Miami gets the tiebreaker. Uh, the only way that Cleveland moves up is if Baltimore were to lose to Cincinnati and under that circumstance eh, then actually Cleveland would play Pittsburgh again if not Cleveland would be playing Buffalo I'm pretty comfortable in saying that if the Browns make the playoffs they're playing either Cleveland they're playing either Buffalo or Pittsburgh in the first round of the playoffs and I would venture to say that the other team may very well wind up playing perhaps the most dangerous team in this first week, and that would be the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens are playing some damn good football right now. I I don't know if anyone's noticed or not. The, The Ravens are playing some really, really, really good football right now. Uh, and you know, again, if the playoffs were to be held today, and, and they're not, but if they were to be held today, the matchups would be Cleveland at Buffalo, Baltimore at Pittsburgh, Miami at Tennessee. Indianapolis would find their way out. I'm going to make a prediction right now, and it's not because I have deep-seated hatred toward Tennessee with what they have done through – uh, let's see, the Steelers, uh, they, they affected the Steelers' season. They certainly affected the Bills' season. Uh, and in a certain way, they've affected a couple of other teams. But I think what happened on Sunday when J.J. Watt basically 
called out everybody on the Houston team, especially on the defense, and pretty much embarrassed everyone by saying what he said, which needed to be said. I think Houston upsets Tennessee on Sunday. I I really think that Houston has a chance to upset Tennessee on Sunday. If that's the case, Indianapolis has Jacksonville. Look, Jacksonville already has the first seed sewed up. Uh, They could win. Okay, I, I suppose they could. But keep in mind, Indianapolis lost to Jacksonville in week one. That's, that's Jacksonville's only win, a week one victory over Indianapolis. Indianapolis is fighting for their playoff life. They're going to smash Jacksonville. I think they will. I think they're going to smash Jacksonville. I think that J.J. Watt is going to have that Houston defense jacked up and ready to play. He freaking embarrassed them. Uh, with with what he said. And, and J.J. Watt is one of those guys that when he speaks, everyone in that franchise is looking at him and listening to every single word. He commands that much respect. God, I'd love to have him in a Bills uniform or a Browns uniform. And if you're a Steelers fan, you'd love to have him and T.J. Uh, doing their thing. You'd have the Watt brothers all uh, on the same team. That would be crazy. I think Houston upsets Tennessee, and I think Tennessee gets left at the altar. They're done. I think Tennessee loses their chance to go to the playoffs. So Indianapolis at 11-5 and five gets into the tournament as the four seed. Browns beat the Steelers. Ravens beat the Bengals. And I'm going to say the Dolphins show up and they beat the Bills. So what do you have? You have Baltimore winning the division. Cleveland remains the seven. I'm sorry, Indianapolis winning the division. They go to the four. Cleveland remains the seven. The Ravens remain the six. The Dolphins remain the five. I'm going to say that Buffalo and Cleveland are going to be playing in the playoffs. Pittsburgh's going to wind up playing Baltimore and Indianapolis is going to pl- wind up playing Miami. Good luck with that one. That's that's my prediction. I'll, I'll just throw that out there. All right, we're going to take a timeout. On the other end, we will hear from Tribune Chronicle as well as Vindicator Sports Editor Doug Chapin. We'll get his take on uh, what's going on in high school basketball. Good to see the Trumbull County schools are starting to make up some games. And Well, is it enough to uh, have a mad dash to 22 games? Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, But with the Christmas break going on right now, there are some teams that are uh, in and playing basketball, and we'll see what that means for uh, the Trumbull County Schools. We'll talk to them about that. Uh, In light of what was just announced by the Steelers, Mason Rudolph, your starting quarterback. We'll talk Browns and Steelers with Doug Chapin, and we'll also get his take on uh, Ohio State, taking on Clemson on Friday. That's coming up in a bit. Stick around. Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. It continues after this timeout. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last hundred years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We're known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible-tasting products. We're locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better.
Irish Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Many, many thanks again to WRS Wealth Advisors. Uh, They're the reason why you, the fans, can listen and watch every single basketball game or every single winter sports event that we have on the network uh, for free, the basketball games uh, especially. Many, many thanks to those uh, wonderful folks at WRS uh, Wealth Advisors. All right, it is a little after 1 o'clock. And uh, joining us, as he always does, uh, Tuesday around this time, the esteemed sports editor of the Tribune Chronicle, as well as the Vindicator, the one and only Doug Chapin. Uh, He joins us on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Doug, how are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. How was your Christmas? It was good. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right, so uh, the Trumbull County Schools, speaking of Christmas, they got a nice Christmas gift courtesy of the uh, health board. Uh, They're now allowed to play basketball, and uh, it seems like everyone's back to normal. There are some teams that are uh, starting to to get their uh, schedules in line, and it it looks more and more like uh, there are some teams in the county uh, that are going to have two and three games before we – uh, turn the calendar to uh, 2021. Yeah, we uh, actually we have to get the good schedule so we know who's playing where, so we can cover games. Um, the schedules that you know we got earlier in the season are uh, um, obviously don't mean anything anymore. So uh, we uh, we've got a few, but uh, there's still plenty out there we haven't gotten, and uh, we're not quite sure who's playing. Yeah, I know McDonald is playing Salem tonight uh, down in Salem, and, and we'll have that game on YSNlive.com. I'm pretty sure, matter of fact, I'm almost positive uh, LeBray is in action tonight as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can, uh, I can throw down some of the uh, Trumbull County schools uh, as, to, uh, as to who is in action tonight. Um, yeah, LeBray is, uh, LeBray is in action tonight in Camel. Uh, and Mineral Ridge, actually, uh, let me uh, let me uh, backtrack a little bit. Uh, Mineral Ridge is playing LeBray uh, in uh, in boys basketball, and uh, McDonald is uh, is playing in Salem uh, in boys basketball. So there you go. Okay. Well, we already have our schedule. What we're covering made up for this week already, anyway. Um, so you know, we'll have to. I, I've got to get uh, get schedules from the ads and. Uh, we can start working on next week and uh, plan what we're going to do. Um, yeah, it, it's been a weird, weird uh, season. That you know the whole thing. I would imagine um, that the Trumbull schools will want to play other Trumbull schools to start with because you don't want to have your first game out there against a team that's already played five or six. Um, that's just not fair. But uh, you know, I, I'm imagining or I'm assuming that they will sort of try as best they can to just play other Trumbull schools. Um, if it's possible. And it's a really good idea. Try to get as many of those schools to play each other and build up their amount of games. And it, and if you have to double or triple up, I mean, let's be honest, uh, the best practiced at this point uh, is to play a game, especially if you're playing a game against someone who's in the same boat as you are, i.e. they haven't played that many games. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, that's, I, I, I mean, I'm sure coaches and Trumbull are, are, you know, worried about, uh, you know, how things are going to go. And, and you know, I mean, I'd imagine the, the outlook is to your kids, you know, hey, remember, we're behind in games with these other teams. Um, you know, if, if you end up having to play somebody that's out, outside of Trumbull. So it'll be interesting to uh, see. Hopefully by, you know, the end of January, um, start of February, everybody's kind of caught up and we're even with the games played and, you know, we don't have any more. Um, shutdowns or anything like that, and uh, you know we can get to a, a, a um, you know regular postseason that we're used to. 
it, it was interesting. I was when I was doing the research for our top stories of the year, I went back to all the newspapers for each day, and it was just incredible to me that here we were, you know, we, we, each day of the week in, in what was that early March, we had you know pictures of the regional game, regional semifinals, and the regional final, and and the, the girls West Branch West State, and you know that week, um, I think McDonald lost in his regional, Kennedy too, or, and and it was just suddenly, boom, it all stopped, and the, you know for the next two months there was really nothing nothing going on. It was just uh, just remembering that was kind of made me made me think of what a totally unique and an amazing uh, season that was that we that we a year that we lived through. Yeah, I know that uh, I, I probably don't ever want to uh, go through that again, mainly because it, it felt like doing a show with with no sports, local sports to talk about, and, uh-huh. and basically no sports to talk about in general. It was kind of like being a producer on the Seinfeld show uh, where you're cranking out episodes about nothing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, you, you mentioned, um, um, and this is going to get us off topic for a second, you mentioned that uh, playing games is the best way to practice, and I fully agree with that. Uh, once you, you know, you've got your kids knowing what they're supposed to be doing, you, you, you can't cover every situation that comes up in practice. So you, you play games or scrimmages, and those situations come up, and then you can address them. Um, that it reminded me of something I read last week that the – the thinking in baseball with the whole dropping all those minor league teams that they did, their thinking is that they would rather coach these kids um, in a closed situation, you know, even in a, in a, in a gym or, or in a, you know, a facility like that, rather than play games. Their, their thinking is that playing games doesn't help in the development of a player, which is, to me, totally ridiculous. Well, it's laughable, and and uh, you know it's unfortunately the the game is now being run by people that are more concerned with uh, spin rate on pitches and right. and uh, how fast you swing a bat and and uh, you know how far you can hit a ball or how fast you can throw a baseball and and those things are not supposed to be nor were they ever supposed to be at the top of of a person's list, but. Unfortunately, when you let morons run the game, uh, you get a moron product. So there you go. Yeah, I mean those are their, their measurables they call them, and the thing that still they cannot measure is how a player, an athlete, male, female, whatever, whatever level you're talking about, we cannot measure how they will react in a in a key situation and a pressure on, um, or how they'll react to their teammates when their teammates doesn't do poorly around them, or how they'll react when you just can't measure all that stuff, and that is so important. And you only find that out by seeing them playing games. And and I think that you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if the ads, and especially in conference play, I mean, you've got your you know, you got your teams that are uh, that are in conferences, and and I'll give the Mahoning Valley Athletic Conference gray tier. Uh, an example, every single team in that conference, with the exception of Camel and Crestview, are Trumbull County schools. Right. Now, you can obviously have those schools play within each other uh, for mm-hmm. a couple of games and, and at least have two conference games in play before you venture out and play a Camel sure. or a Crestview. Uh, or you can uh, you can call up some of the other schools in in uh, Trumbull County, i.e. Warren JFK, uh, some of the other uh, some of the other bigger schools or, or smaller schools in Trumbull County, and and see if you can get some non conference games in that direction. Or some of the schools that may not have a great record right now and and would be deemed quote beatable in Mahoning and Columbiana counties, and try to schedule games there. But I'm with you. Look, if I'm a if I'm a team in Trumbull County, uh, instead of having practices, you know, five or uh, four or five days a week and and playing, you know, one or two games a week, no, I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to play a game on on a Tuesday. I'm going to play a game on a Thursday uh, and, and a Friday or a 
uh, a Tuesday, a Thursday, a Friday, and a Saturday, and practice on Monday and Wednesday. I, I'll, I'll do that for a couple of weeks so I can get my team up to speed. Yeah, yeah, that, that you know, makes a lot of sense. You, you've, uh, I, I mean, at this, at this level, the high school level, um, the kids, you know, know their most of the game already. They, they, uh, they've, uh, um, you know, you, you've practiced enough with them before the, the season was suspended. That, you know, they know the offense and, and the defense and how they, you know, what they're doing team wise. Um, yeah, and obviously you're going to go over that again. It, it, but but it, again, it's it's reacting to what the teammate, what the opponent does. It's you know just playing against other people, um, you know banging bodies and all that kind of stuff um, is you know so key. And, and you're right, the I think all the leagues that we have around here have um, a tumble contingent and a uh, Mahoning contingent. Um, the AAC even has you know Hardy and Allen. They could play. To start off, they're you know both in the AAC. Um, in that way, it would you know be even as far as number of games played, rather than playing Fitch, Boardman, or Canfield right away. Um, and the same is true with the Northeast Eight, and, and you know like you mentioned, the Gray uh, tier, even the NBAC Scarlet with the uh, Riz and McDonald. Um, you know they they could start off, but you know like however it works out, that that's you know something that. You know, the coach is going to think about and athletic directors too. Doug Chapin, the Tribune Chronicle sports editor, as well as the Vindicator sports editor, joining me at this time every Tuesday on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Doug, one of your uh, string reporters uh, has, is going to be named the new head football coach at Liberty pending board approval on January the 11th. Uh, Joe Simon's been a sports reporter for you guys in the Tribune Chronicle the last 16 years. How does this, given now that he is going to be a head football coach at a uh, at a high school, does this affect what Joe would do in the off season? Uh, we'll have to see. I mean, uh, we, we we don't know yet. We've talked a little bit about you know what might happen, and uh, um, certainly we're going to do everything we can to uh, make sure there's no conflict of interest in things that he covers. Um, but he has been an assistant coach for years. Um, while doing this, and uh, he's an assistant, or he's a junior high wrestling coach too. So we worked around that for a while, and uh, you know, we wish the best of luck to Joe. Is, is uh, you know, is, is coaching, and uh, you know, he, he's a vital part of our sports department and our coverage. And uh, you know, we're going to try to work see what we can uh, work out to to, uh, to you know continue that. Well, the good news is, if uh, if you ever need a quote, you know, he's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, some good news, uh, perhaps. Uh, according to Tom Withers from the Associated Press, Governor DeWine is expected to announce the Cavaliers are going to be able to have 10% capacity at games, roughly 2,000 fans. Uh, and given the fact how the Cavaliers have started their season, 2,000 fans, uh, that, that may, be, uh, may be a hot ticket in town, given the fact the Cavs are off to such a good start this year. Yeah, they are playing well. Uh, you know, whether they're that, – that's great for the fans that are able to make it for, for that. Um, you know, and, and you're probably right. It would be a hot ticket for them playing as well as they are so far. But whether – I mean, I'm, I'm mostly a TV fan when it comes to pro sports anymore. I rarely get a chance to, to go to a game. So, um, you know, it, it's it, – if it gets to the point where the, the fans create a – a uh, um, advantage for the home team. Then, then I think that's you know important. I, I, I don't want to you know shrug off what the, what's going on and the fact that they might get some fans in there. But uh, we've seen in, in a lot of uh, football stadiums too, and maybe it'll be different in, uh, indoors. But uh, you know that many uh, a few fans doesn't make all that much of a difference. I don't know as far as the home field advantage. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's good news. A step in the right direction, and uh, you know, hopefully, it doesn't cause problems, and you know, create a new, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a new outbreak of the, uh, the virus. Well, certainly, if you're uh, only putting ten percent of the fans, uh, they'll they'll be spaced out. There's no two ways about mm -hmm. that. 
All right, a couple of other things uh, to get to, and we're speaking with Doug Chapin, Tribune Chronicle and Vindicator Sports Editor on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Youngstown State men's basketball team lost a pair to Cleveland State, and they were without Darius Quisenberry for both of those games. I mean, it's pretty safe to say that uh, the Penguins are a much, much different team and not in a good way when DQ is out of the lineup. Well, certainly. I mean, that, that, I mean, any, any uh, team losing their best player and their, their leader is, is you know, going to be in that situation. Uh, so, yeah, um, you know, it, 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 we're, we're, we're kind of running into the – what we talked about last time we talked about the back-to-back games and, and how, how uh, well, it's just strange or, or I guess it's unique uh, the, the way it's setting up. And, and, you know, coaches are finding out things about um, – how it works and, and, and what what they can do and can't do to um, you know to either improve their outcome in the second day or or you know or, or make sure that everybody's ready to play you know a solid two games on the weekend. So um, a lot of that stuff is, is new too. So that kind of adds to I mean the uh, uh, absence of your best player. So yeah, certainly they are definitely not not the same team uh, without him. Doug, it was announced in uh, Mike Tomlin's press conference about an hour ago that Ben Roethlisberger will not be playing in the uh, finale. They're going to rest him, given the fact that the Steelers, I mean, they had a bye week, but it was so damn long ago. They've already played 12 consecutive games uh, since their uh, unscheduled bye week on October the 4th. Uh, so because they've played 12 consecutive weeks, uh, Roethlisberger is going to sit. Mason Rudolph is going to be the starting quarterback. Now, in theory, this certainly helps the Cleveland Browns in a win-and-you're-in scenario. On, you know, Now, on the flip side, okay, Rudolph is the quarterback, but if your defense doesn't do its job, uh, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. Um, yeah, I guess so. I, I was curious, what, what is the um, situation between the two three seeds in the conference with, with Buffalo. Well it's this is this is what surprised me, Doug, because that two seed is still very much up for grabs. Now the only way the Steelers get it is if they beat Cleveland and Miami uh, beat Buffalo. Then the Steelers would have the two seed based upon the fact that they would finish one game better than Buffalo. If the Steelers and Bills both win or if they both lose then the Bills would still have the two seed based on the head-to-head matchup earlier in the season in which Buffalo beat Pittsburgh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's certainly good news for the Browns. Uh, but I think their uh, Coach Stefanski is of a mind that, you know, he doesn't care who the other team suits up. We're, you know, we're worried about us and how we play and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, um, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's interesting. It was quite a... Um, 24, 40, 42-hour period there before the Browns game and during it with the whole um, loss of the wide receiver core. Um, and to, to their credit, the Browns, for the most part, <clears throat> they didn't make excuses. They just went out and played. And didn't make excuses afterwards. They said, you know, it's all the right thing. Um, and, you know, and it, you know, the the fan base has been back and forth over whether they should run, run the ball more or, or, or whatever. But, you know, what it, it is what it is. It's a really difficult situation when you find out right before the game that, um, you know, this is going to happen or, or, you know, a night and a half before the game. So um, the Browns, you know, they just have to go out and win. If they win their game, you know, no matter who's quarterback for the team, they, uh, they're they in the playoff. And, uh, you know, I, I think the uh, – the recent uh, the three-game losing streak the Steelers had sort of, in most people's eyes, brought them back down to earth. Um, and, and, you know, Browns fans, Browns players, you know, think that they, they can win that game. And, you know, that's, you know they're, they're going to go out and try to do that, not worrying about what other factors are, you know, as far as the playoff shape. Now, the thing that, that I'm going to be interested in, obviously the four receivers that did not play against the New York Jets, and that was a huge part in – the reason why the Browns lost to the Jets. Let's not, you know, let's not poo-poo that. But uh, are these four guys going to be able to play 
uh, on Sunday. And I, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to be able to, but nobody has officially said anything yet. Oh, I thought I had seen something that just said so, but maybe it wasn't official. Um, uh, the way I understand it, it's been in the past, is if, if, if you're sidelined because of contact tracing, because you had a close contact with someone who tested positive, then as long as you continue to test negative, you're okay to play. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure. You know, maybe one of them picks it up and he's going to test positive. Who knows? But, uh, um, yeah, whatever. Hopefully it can happen. If it's, if it's another week of the same thing, well, at least I'll have a week to have uh, uh, prepared for it rather than, you know, a couple hours. So, yeah, whatever happens. It, it, it's it's really a – I mean, I, I – I sort of feel for the NFL, but because it's the NFL, I really don't because they're, the NFL itself is just a, a – uh, the, the entity itself is hard to like because they just seem to do the wrong thing so many times. Um, and this, this whole thing with Denver having to play without a quarterback and the Browns having to play without receivers and the fact that they let Baltimore um, – they re- rescheduled the Baltimore game three times, you know, it makes in, in a lot of fans' eyes kind of, kind of uh, what's going on here. Yeah, it was it was definitely different, and, and uh, there's certainly inconsistencies involving uh, everything that the National Football League has done. There's no two ways about that. And I, I even made mention in the first hour, given the fact that Tennessee put uh, the Steelers through all kinds of uh, misery, they've certainly put my bills through all kinds of misery in a perfect world. Houston beats Tennessee, Indianapolis beats uh, Jacksonville, and Tennessee finds themselves on the outside looking in. Yeah, yeah, that's the, 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 the thing I've been looking at as far as, as being a Browns fan and, of course, not having the confidence in my team that they're, they're going to win the game they need to win. Um, but um, I've, I've looked at that scenario where if the Browns lose, the, the best chance to, to get in the playoffs is if uh, Tennessee loses. And the weird thing is, Normally, we root for the Dolphins to lose, um, but in, the, in this scenario, they have to win because if it's head-to-head Browns and Titans, and I believe I'm getting this right, if it's head-to-head with them, the Browns get the edge because they beat the Titans. But if it's a three-way tie um, or you know, a four-way tie for a position, I think they go to the conference record, and, and the Browns don't fare as well there um, as far as the uh, – whether they make the playoffs or not. Yeah, Miami, or I'm sorry, uh, Cleveland would need some help if if they lost to Pittsburgh uh, on Sunday. And, and frankly, and, and I'll say it, I mean, if you can't beat the Steelers with a backup quarterback, you don't belong in the playoffs. Sure, sure, sure. I, I agree with that. I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, and, and as, as a fan, the season went along, uh, you know, I, I would have said, at the beginning of the season, I said 11-5, um, you know, in the playoff chase. You know, whether you made it or not, most of the time 11 and 5 does, but, um, you know, that's good for me. So, you know, of course, when it gets there, you, you, you want to be a little, you're a little bit more greedy, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, and, you know, hopefully they, uh, they go out and win it. Doug Chapin, our guest, he is the sports editor of the Tribune Chronicle as well as the Vindicator. Doug, before we let you go, Friday, New Year's Day, and and we certainly hope that uh, 2021 is worlds better than what 2020 was, uh, and hopefully no one ever speaks of 2020 again. And yet, uh, one of my teams, uh, one of my uh, diehard teams is in the uh, football playoffs. Whether they belong there or not, that's another discussion. Notre Dame is playing Alabama. Ohio State is playing Clemson. Both Notre Dame and Ohio State are uh, underdogs in this game against the, quote, two Blue Bloods. Is there any chance that Notre Dame and Ohio State play in a national championship game? Um, the way I understand it, if Notre Dame beats Alabama and Ohio State beats Clemson, then yes, they would. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I mean, that's. Alabama's pretty good. Clemson's pretty good. And although I, I will also, I, I don't want to say I resent the, the fact, I, I take issue with calling Clemson a blue blood. To be a blue blood in my mind, you have to have been doing it for a long time, been really good for a long, long time. And I would consider, uh, say, Oklahoma, um, uh, 
probably a couple others out there that, that have been really, really good programs for a longer time than Clemson. Clemson was a run-of-the-mill average program in the ACC for a long, long time until, what, the last decade. So, uh, to me, they're not blue blood yet. Their team, their program is doing really well, sort of like Florida State and Miami were in the, in the 70s and 80s. I never considered them. I mean, they were, they put together a real good 10, 15-year run, but uh, you got to do it for longer than that to be blue blood in my mind. But anyway. No, I, a point, to, a point well taken, and I, I tend to agree with that. I, yeah. I just think from, from my perspective, blue blood is, okay, these are the two best teams uh, right. in college football. And one can argue uh, there are two teams, and then you have to go substantially lower on the elevator, uh, and you'll find Notre Dame and Ohio State. Yeah, and that's you know that's one of the things too. Uh, we've been talking in the newsroom a little bit about it. The you know there's been a clamor for more than four teams in the uh, in the uh, playoffs. But if you look at the semifinal results, there have been a lot of blowouts in in the two versus three and the one versus four matchups. So if you go lower, you know go with more teams, the one versus eight and the two versus seven, those are not going to be pretty games. Um, you know, so you know the question is, is there enough depth out there in, at the top of the college football to, to compete um, with with those other schools. But back to the question. I think Ohio State has a chance. Um, one of the things, one of the factors is they, they're at the point they're about halfway through their, their normal schedule. Just when they be hitting their stride, all the uh, first year starters are up to speed. Um, they, you know, Trey Sermon has gotten up to speed as far as you know, the, the, the offense, and uh, um, he's clearly showed, which, which was kind of surprising he didn't earlier, that he was a better uh, runner than Master Teague. And, 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 you know, anybody that – that's going to be the case. I mean, he started two years at Oklahoma, was really, uh, you know, for a, a really good team. He was the, the main running back. Teague was a, a backup for two years, and this was his first year as a starter. So it doesn't surprise me that Sermon has come on like that. Um, I think they are, you know, sort of hitting that their peak. They're not uh, tired, worn out, anything like that. They're, they're fresh, but they haven't played as much. Um, at the same token, you, you can argue that Clemson has, you know, their first-year starters have more experience, et cetera. But I, I don't know. I think Ohio State has can, can, can win it, but they're going to have to outscore them. Um, you know, Ohio State defense is, is, you know, just isn't as strong as it's been. I mean, they, they don't have as bunch of number one draft choices or you know future number one draft choices as they've had in the past um so that's going to have to be something like the you know 42 to 38 for Ohio State to win I think um and Notre Dame Alabama I, I, I'm not sure whether uh, I haven't seen enough of those two during the season to know you know what it would take strategy wise for Notre Dame to win um I, I know Alabama has a lot of really good good players out there and uh you know, it's going to be tough to uh, uh, tough for uh, Notre Dame to stop them. I think they'd need divine intervention. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, it. It just shows the the recruiting that Alabama and Clemson have done, and, and Ohio State's been pretty solid in, in that regard too over the years. That it, it it's college level. You. You can be really good at taking three-star recruits and making them much better players over a, you know, four or five years, and, and especially with offensive and defensive linemen. I think that that comes into play. But still, the team that has <clears throat> six or seven five-star recruits out there playing, as opposed to the team that has one, one or two, you know, a bunch of three stars that have gotten better, et cetera. It, 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 it makes a big difference. Um, they're uh, especially when you put them in positions, and, and that's what Alabama has done a great job over the years. Put them in positions to to excel, and um, and they've done it with uh, you know really good quarterbacks and average quarterbacks. But the, the surrounding cast is really really good, both in offense and defense, and, and that's you know how you stay at the top or near the top for that many years. Should be entertaining, to say the least. Doug, always a pleasure. Next week, uh, well, we'll have a new year, and, and we'll certainly uh, 
we'll certainly have a lot to talk about, especially with the high school basketball um, get, getting in high gear. And, and that should be an awful lot of fun to see just how many team or just how many games all of the Trumbull County schools can play between now and the end of the regular season. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have to play 22. If they get 15 in, I think that's, that's uh, you know, that's the season. So, yeah, yeah. hopefully it works out. And uh, everything, everything 2021 is much better than 2020. Get your conference games in and a uh, two or three non-conference games. If you can get 15 to 18 games in, I think that would be a great season. Doug, always a pleasure, and and uh, celebrate uh, the new year wisely, sir. All right, take care. You got it, Doug Chapin, the Tribune Chronicle and Vindicator Sports Editor, jumping in on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. All right, we got some uh, news. Uh, YSU, uh, the baseball program, announcing that senior pitcher Colin Floyd has been named a top player to watch in the Horizon League. Uh, This according to the college baseball newspaper. Uh, Last year, in a very shortened season, Floyd went 2-1 with a 274 earned run average. He was second in the Horizon League with 25 strikeouts over his four starts in the very brief, uh, 14 games brief, 2020 campaign. Again, senior pitcher Colin Floyd has been named a top player to watch in the Horizon League. This according to the College Baseball newspaper. All right, we'll take a timeout, be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point, courtesy of uh, Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. More of this show coming up in a bit. Stick around. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. And locally, we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high-risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Rain will come and go tomorrow. There'll be some dry intervals. Stay ready with Storm Trucker 21. A severe weather threat now through around sunset this evening. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's Let's win win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient brewed gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on Rude, and so should you. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Points, courtesy of Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Our friend of the show, Aditi Kinkabwala, uh, tweeting out that Mike Tomlin says, with the one buy not available, he will rest key starters this weekend. Now, he has not elaborated which other starters will be sitting other than Ben Roethlisberger, as Mason Rudolph is going to be starting and playing the entire game uh, on Sunday. But uh, according to Mike Tomlin, uh, through a friend of our show, uh, Aditi Kinkabwala, 
Uh, Mike Tomlin saying that uh, he will indeed rest key starters this weekend. Quoting the uh, coach of the Steelers, given an opportunity to airmail a player or two into the postseason, we'll do that. So uh, there you go. Uh, we don't know uh, other than other than uh, Roethlisberger. Uh, we have no idea uh, who else the uh, Steelers are uh, going to sit. Uh, but Roethlisberger is sitting. Mason Rudolph will be your starting quarterback on Sunday. And, and again, none of this matters if the defense doesn't do their job. Defense doesn't do their job, guess what? Browns lose, and they don't deserve to go to the playoffs. The defense has to get the job done. Let's go to the phone lines. Emmanuel, you're on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. What's going on, brother? How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. Yourself? Well, I'm sitting there listening to you, right? And uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of different things. I, I'm not disagreeing with uh, the last couple of days, couple of shows, or, or any of your callers or guests or anything, but – I'm seeing I'm, I'm seeing something different. First of all, I really hate to say this, but can we talk a little bit about YSU, uh, YSU men's basketball team? Yeah, please do. Absolutely. Now, I personally think they've made a lot of strides, big strides last year. Oh yeah. And and and, and, and if it was at least a good season, not only that, I think it, they uh, were springboarding to uh, to this season. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Coach Cat has players in now, right? He's uh, got the players that he wants. He does have the players that he wants. Uh, I do want to make sure that you understand that uh, Darius but Quisenberry didn't play this past but, weekend. But wait a minute. But, but wait a minute. But, but wait a minute. And also, too, uh, wasn't it was somebody, uh, one of the commentators, uh, name dropped YSU about a program uh, on the rise? Yep. So all this was coming into this season, and as as a great one said, they the, the schedule was not kind to them. But I look at it this way: the schedule was set up that if even with injuries, if they would have played better basketball, you know, I I, I think they could. This was their year, and I'm just a little bit disappointed because everything was set for them, and they're a better team than what they're showing, even without Quisenberry. Am I wrong for saying that? Uh, I'm kind of sort of because, unfortunately, the Horizon League, they didn't give Youngstown State any favors because they, once again, scheduled them to be away from Beagley in eight of the first ten games. Go ahead. Just give me – yeah, okay. Now – I know you say if if if, if some and, and butts candy and nuts or whatever, right? But don't you think that if, if Quisenberry wasn't hurt and he was healthy, that they could have won some of those games? I think they could have won uh, at least half of them. What do you think? Well, they would have they would have definitely split against Cleveland State. I, I don't know if if Quisenberry would have uh, would have helped uh, or, or would have been the and, difference and, and in I, Saturday's I, game, I but it would have been in the Sunday's I, game. They'll go. They'll go. They'll go a ten minute span. Uh, where they can play with anybody. And then for five or six minutes, it's like they can't spell basketball. And that's not good. Am I seeing the wrong thing? Uh, they can play with anybody, but it just they haven't put two halves together. They haven't, they haven't played a whole game yet. And that's not about injuries. Well, go ahead. No, I, I tend to agree with that, that. We haven't seen the best of, of, uh, of Youngstown State yet. I don't think there's any question about that. Now, I do think that, you know, Quisenberry's absence it has a lot to do with that. Uh, you're taking, a, you're taking a, a very important piece out, and you're replacing that important piece with a true freshman that it, up until uh, four or five games ago had never appeared in a college basketball game, let alone a Division I college basketball game. Uh, you're, you're, you're asking for trouble. I understand that, but I thought they were uh, they were had more depth and they were a better team, and they are a better team than what they show them with or without him. And I think towards the end of the year, you watch them. That's 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 a good team there. But I just think they just kind of missed missed the boat to start off with. And the second thing is, now we've been talking, uh, a couple of us been talking to you and and, and asking you about big, about Big Ben. 
Now, if you watch Big Ben from 2005, you watch Big Ben from 2010, you watch Big Ben now, there's a couple things. First of all, he's a lot heavier. And second of all, he's he's hurt. He's, he's, he, he's not as mobile, and I'm not talking about his arm, but you can see his legs. Some people say that a quarterback throws from his legs. Some people say it's the shoulders. He needs to be set down which I'm glad for the simple reason is now we can quite possibly run an RPO, maybe even do a rollout, and God forbid we might even run a quarterback sneak. So Miles Garrett going to have to chase us instead of just going back there and, 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 and knocking down Big Ben. Then it will be back. But I'm glad he's sitting down. He needs to rest. He's beat up. Now, and I also think they might sit down and watch because uh, – well, Pittsburgh has is not is, is, is been known for not putting people on the injury list and just getting fined for that. I think I think Watts was banged up, and 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 I think if if you're not healthy, I don't think you're playing. I don't think he's resting anybody that's healthy. I think you were right about that. What do you think? Well, I I, I think that he is going to rest some other guys uh, now that you're pretty much conceding the two seed to Buffalo, uh, which. You know, I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but given given the fact that the last time the Steelers had a buy, it was a manufactured buy instead of a buy that they should have had later in the season, thanks to Tennessee. Uh, under the circumstances, they've what they've played thirteen consecutive games. Uh, yeah, you you probably should have your franchise quarterback sit. Uh, get him uh, get him ready to go the following week. Whether you're playing the Browns, the Ravens, uh, it doesn't matter which team you're playing. You're you're going to wind up playing one of those two teams unless some really weird stuff happens. Baltimore or Cleveland is going to be Pittsburgh's opponent uh, in in week seven in, in the uh, first round of the playoffs. That it, it, again, barring some weird weird stuff, uh, that'll be your opponent in the first round of the playoffs. So. Yeah, let's let's rest Ben, and and if there's a couple of other guys that you know that that uh, Tomlin thinks that uh, they need a week off uh, prior to uh, prior to the start of the playoffs, then he'll uh, he'll rest those guys as well. I, I would say watch down because he got he got he got dinged up, and, and we're gonna need him for the playoff run. But I think if you're healthy, I think you have, I think you have to play. And uh, two more quick things. Now let's talk about San Diego again. Now they're trying to get with uh, drivers from uh, from from Chicago. How how can they how can they do? I thought they they had I thought they had they already playing uh, paying um the uh the the the, uh, the players in the outfield money. How, how do you, how can they step under the sal- the salary cap doing this? How are they doing this? Well, they don't have a salary cap. Are we talking baseball? Yeah, no, they don't have a salary cap in baseball. Oh, so well, uh, luxury luxury excuse me luxury tax. Well, they don't even have that either. I mean, I mean, it's the San Diego hasn't really spent a whole lot of money per se. And, you know, honestly, I think what they're doing right now uh, and how they're they're able to do this without trading away the best of the best of their really, really deep minor league system, how they're not trading away the best of the best of their blue chip prospects. And they're still able to get their hands on. Uh, uh, Blake Snell, and they're still able to get their hands on you, Darvish. Uh, it, 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 mind-blowing that they've been able to do this. And it would not surprise me. I'll throw it out here. It would not surprise me in any way, shape, or form if they were to sign Trevor Bauer to a multi-year contract and just have an unbelievable rotation to go along with the offense that uh, that they have put together this this San Diego team uh they are a whole lot closer to being the elite team in the National League uh than where we stood four or five days ago or is it good enough to beat the Dodgers they're they're on the Dodgers tail uh they're 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 very close uh to to being even with the Dodgers right now because offensively uh they're there uh, offensively, they're there. They needed some help with pitching. And, and, and unfortunately for them, you know, when you made the deal with Clevenger, keep in mind, Clevenger is out for the entire 2021 season. He'll have Tommy John. And this is the second time 
that Clevenger will have had Tommy John surgery. So you have a chance where this may not take and Clevenger may never be the same guy that you saw in Cleveland. So with that in mind, I think San Diego realized, okay, wait a second. Not only do we have to replace Clevenger in this rotation, we also have to beef up our rotation even more because there's no guarantee that Clev comes back in 2022. Well, sounds like a plan to me. And um, I, I want to wish uh, Liberty's uh, new head coach, I want to wish him luck. And um, and I want to thank him for the time that he spent on, uh, on, on uh, our coaching staff. Uh, Liberty's getting a good man. Yeah, he's he's gonna be he's gonna be a lot of fun to watch, and and uh, he comes into a really good situation. There were not a lot of seniors on that Liberty team this year. Okay, let me ask you one question: Was uh, was born uh, the uh, coach of Boardman when you were there? No, I w- w- well, I left Boardman. Good Lord, I left Boardman in third grade, so I, I was oh, okay. uh, yeah, I wasn't anywhere close to uh, to being in high school when when the family moved out of Boardman. I think my oldest brother. Uh, was in seventh grade when we uh, when we moved to Letonia, so he wasn't even in high school yet. He was he was just starting junior high uh, when we moved into uh, Letonia. So, but to answer your question, no, Bill Boren was not at Boardman. I, he wasn't the head coach at Boardman. I know that. Okay, well, uh, uh, I I know uh, uh, I hear the story. The two things I know about him is <laughs> uh, he, he said one time that um, if you go ten and zero. They uh they they name a the street after you. If you go nine and one, they chase you down. It and we all know about the past. You know the guy with the teeth sitting down. But you know Ma- Matthews Matthews has a, has has a great coach, and he's going to put together a very very good uh, uh coaching staff. And um and he's going to pick up with Perry left off at. And uh we got some good coaches around here. Yeah, we sure do. And and you know I mean Bill's job at Matthews is to get more kids out for football. Uh, that program's fallen on some hard times, and and a lot like some of the other smaller uh, smaller schools and smaller communities, uh, you know the the kids going out for football, it's it's not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, in my, in my day, and and you gotta you gotta understand this was thirty some odd years ago, uh, and this was in the heyday of of Letonia having some really really good football. And there were forty and fifty kids out for football. Well, our school. It, it, it wasn't really that big back then. I mean, it, I think it's a little bit bigger then than it is now. But the fact is we get twice as many kids out for football uh, when when I was in school as opposed to the kids that are out for football now. So it just – winning has a lot to do with it. And, and, and I think that if, if Coach Boren can get that winning culture back in Matthews, I think that the uh, the program will be in pretty good shape, but when you don't have a winning culture, uh, you're not going to be able to find those kids that are not a hundred percent committed to football on the surface. Uh, you know, you you always have kids that are going out for a sport based upon the fact that they want to be part of a winning program, and and they're not necessarily invested in the program, but they're more wanting to be a part of. The program, you, you, well, you, under, you know what I'm, I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you like it is as a parent. You know, I got teenagers; they travel in packs. So <laughs> with one person doing the rest, I'm doing it. Hey, uh, if I don't talk to you again, happy New Year, my brother. All right, happy New Year to you too, man. I appreciate it. Three three zero eight six six zero eight one three eight eight six zero eight one three. I mean, I'm not say, I'm not saying that that you know kids don't care. I'm I'm just saying that it, when you have a winning program. You're going to have more kids out for that sport. You're going to have more kids out for that sport. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to have, you know, the best of the best. It just means that there's more kids that are going to be want a part or want to be a part of a winning program. When you don't have a winning program or you have a culture that is not where you're winning all the time, that's when you're going to struggle. You're, you're going to have you're going to struggle getting kids out for sports. Now you'll always have those that are 100 percent bought in. They love the game or they love the the sport. You'll always have those kids bought into the program and they'll always go out for basketball or football or whatever sport. But if you don't have a winning program, it's going to be hard to get those kids that 
they're not a hundred percent into the sport and eh, they're not really wanting to commit all this time if they're going to get their brains beat in. It kind of sucks if you think about it, you know, and understandably, I mean, I understand both sides of this. I mean, if you're blessed enough to be able to play a game, you should be able to do it. I mean, it's, you know, it, and if you're really blessed and you have some incredible talent and uh, talent enough to where a college or two may look at you and say, hey, you can play for us and we'll pay for part of your education, obviously, you, you, you definitely want to play that sport, especially if it comes to the point where you're, Education could possibly be paid for or assisted in paying for your education. I think that would that that's a no brainer. But again, if you're you know, and Matthews is a, unfortunately an example. Matthews is you know they've fallen on some hard times in the last few years, and the football team they don't have the numbers. You get a winning program together, and all of a sudden those numbers are going to start to come up. Because kids are going to be, they're going to be interested in being a part of a winning program. They're going to be interested in being part of that. Because, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to be a part of a winner? I mean, let's be honest. And, and, and same thing with fans. I mean, if you're a fan of a team that has not really played all that well in the last few years, uh, you're not going to be as invested. Now, you might be a hardcore fan and you're every bit as invested. I mean, but the casual fan really isn't going to be all that much invested in a program that hasn't done much. I get that team to win. Now, all of a sudden, the fans are out of the woodwork and, and, and now they're, now they're all gung-ho. Classic example would be the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns came back after, well, I think everyone knows what happened with Modell. I don't even need to get into it because it'll make my blood boil, but neither here nor there. So 99, they come back. And and like every expansion team, not very good. 99, 2000, 2001, all right, a little bit of a rise each single year. 2002, they make the playoffs, and things look to be in pretty decent shape. 2003, they take a step back. 2004, 5, and 6. Eh, 2007, the last year that they really made some noise. They go 10 and 6. They miss out on the playoffs, and then the bottom falls way the hell down. The elevator goes to the bottom floor. The team is torn down, ripped up, torn down, uh, build up, torn down, build up, torn down. Managers, or managers, general managers fired, presidents fired, coaches fired. Uh, the 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 whole thing is in chaos. It's a it's a it's a dumpster fire. And then 2019 rolls around. And okay, you uh, 2017 that you, you lose every single game. 2018, you go from zero to seven wins. Hey man, everything looks to be in really good shape. 2019, they go to six wins because they couldn't handle winning. You fire your coach, you fire your GM, you bring in Stefanski, you bring in the GM, and all of a sudden this team comes out of nowhere. They're starting to play some unbelievable football, and right now they're ten and five. And there's a ton of fans that are just, yeah, they're behind this team. A lot of those fans weren't anywhere to be found in, I don't know, 2009 through, I'm sorry, 2008 through 2019 or 2018. Uh, Not many of those fans were to be found. But, you know, I mean, it's a classic example. You get a, you know, team turns around, everyone comes out of the woodwork. All the casual fans. I'm, I'm not speaking to the hardcore fans. If you're a hardcore fan of your team, you're there. You're, you're there all the time. And, and you know, it, the hardcore fan is the fan that, <laughs> that sees the team play through garbage and, and greatness. And, uh, it, you know, Buffalo and Cleveland fans are an awful lot alike, the hardcore fans, because the last 20 years haven't exactly been the best 20 years for either one of the franchises. And now stuff is starting to come about where both teams are playing some really, really good football. And now everyone, Bill's Mafia has a, just everyone's in the uh, coming out of the woodwork. They're now fans of the Bills. And Browns fans, all of the casual fans, they're gravitating toward the Browns. I mean, look, everyone loves a winner. Everyone loves a winner. And it's the same thing with, with high school sports. Your hardcore kids, yeah, you're going to want to play football. 
it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you're if you're in a b- bad situation, if you, your team isn't all that good. I mean, you're still going to want to play football because you love the game. You're still going to want to play basketball, baseball, volleyball. Uh, you're still going to run track and field, it, whatever sport. If you're a hardcore fan of the sport, if you're if you're talented and you're a hardcore fan of the sport, you're going to play the sport regardless. But if you're a winning program, now all these casual kids that have enough talent to play this sport. Oh, we got a winning program. Oh, hey, coach, <laughs> sign me up. I'm here. Yeah, I'll, I'll be all part of this. Because, hey, if my team's winning, I'll gladly do the two-a-days. I'll gladly do the two-hour practices. I'll gladly do the off-season conditioning program. I mean, that, that's and listen, I'm fine with that. I'm Sign me up. Because I got a winning program and I get a chance to to do some serious things here. Sign me up. I could be a part of a, a league championship team. Hell yeah, sign me up. But if you're not a winning program, good luck trying to get those kids. Because if you're not a winning program, well, let's see. I can go out with my friends on the weekend. Yeah, I could I could do all kinds of different stuff with uh, with my buddies. I don't really have to, you know, practice. I'm getting good grades right now. You know, I could probably get some really good grades if I don't play this sport and maybe get my education paid for that way. Yeah, yeah coach, I'm going to I'm going to pass on this one. I, you know, I know I'm 6'4 and you know, I could probably be a good post player for you in basketball, but yeah, I'm kind of not feeling it. I'm sorry, coach. I'm I'm going to pass. You're a winning program, those kids ain't going to pass. The casual athlete, the one that's possibly good enough to play, they're not going to pass this opportunity. you got a winning program, everyone's going to be a part of it because everyone loves a winner. And that's where Coach Boren is going to, and, and, and every coach that, that's in a small school, every coach, you're going to have to build a winning program in order to have kids that are going to go out for football or basketball, or whatever sport. And, and I'll use football as an example. You know, in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, and I think it was more early 80s, Letonia was winning Tri-County League championships out the wazoo. I think they won four out of the first five or six years. We had 50 kids out for football, 50-plus out for football. You got half of that now. Well, Letonia's not half the size. Half the population didn't move out of the area. You didn't lose half of the uh, of the school district. No. I mean, up until this year, Letonia didn't have much of a winning program the last few years. Everyone loves a winner. That's just the bottom line. So if you have a winning program, you're not going to have a problem getting numbers because everyone wants to be associated with a winner. It's kind of a... Catch 22. <laughs> You're going to have to win with a, a little teeny tiny bit of talent. And then when you start winning, all of a sudden, now you're going to get the outliers. Now you're going to get those kids that are big enough to play this sport, good enough to play this sport, but not necessarily in love with the sport, but they want to be a part of a winner. They'll jump on board because you got a winning program. All right, 330 We'll talk with uh, Rob Schmidt. Penguins lost over the weekend two times to Cleveland State. Darius Quisenberry not in the lineup. We'll uh, talk a little bit about that and preview the upcoming weekend with Green Bay. That's all coming up after this timeout. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions, reminding you that it is open enrollment for Medicare. Now through December 7th, those who qualify can visit our local independent agency by calling us at 330 953 Three seven two two, or visiting us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student athletes in the Valley. Attention all football fans. If you can't see your team play, come and dine with us and watch it live at Boardman, Canfield, or Cortland. Or staying at home, we'll deliver right to your door. That's Coca's Pizza. We serve it hot.
2020 will be a season like we've never seen before. But 21 Sports and YSN will be there for every key moment. The plays, the players, and the stories that will headline this season. Delivered by 21 Sports and YSN. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is here, so it's all hands on deck to make sure your plan still meets your needs for 2020. Call us today. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my green truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. And joining us on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline, we bring in the voice of the YSU men's basketball program, the one and only Rob Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt, sir, how are you today? I'm doing well. Always fun to be with you, buddy. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. Uh, okay. Man, what a lost weekend in Cleveland over the weekend. Uh, Cleveland State knocking off YSU 87-69 to on Saturday. Penguins played a lot better on Sunday, unfortunately. Cleveland State with a late run. They knocked off the uh, Penguins 81-74. to Both of these games uh, were played without Darius Quisenberry. And, Rob, this is such a, a, a far worse team and, and nowhere close to being the YSU Penguins uh, when DQ is not in the lineup. Well, he makes a big difference because he's a guy who is now in his third year, has an experience. And even though they've moved him off the ball, He's still a guy that you have to respect offensively. And he's a guy that you know at any moment can get you 20, 25, 30 or more. And he's going to get you on most nights, you know, 14, 15. Um, but he's a guy that you have to respect offensively. When he's not on the floor, and this is what, this is what you saw in Saturday's game at Cleveland State, when he's not on the floor, you know, teams can start to sag off of a few other guys until – until they become proven scorers. And you're seeing some guys emerge for, for the YSU men as potential um, scoring threats. You know, Shamar Rattan Mays, um, to me, doesn't even look like a freshman, but he's a kid now that you can depend upon to score. Um, the more Alex Vargo plays, he's becoming a kid who's fearless and can score for you. Uh, but until they've proven it time and time again in league play, um, you know, some teams could back off. So what they did Saturday was, I mean, they just crushed Nas. Um, you know, he'd have a guy on him. When he would turn, they'd have another guy on his hip. he turned the other way. There was a third guy. And, and that's why he didn't score Saturday. It wasn't through his lack of effort. It was just Cleveland State made a concerned effort to, to deny him the opportunity to get going because at the time he was the guy's only proven score. And then, you know, Garrett Covington played well Saturday, uh, played extremely well. Sunday, so he became that extra proven score that you didn't have the day before, which is one reason why the guys made such a great, great run at it on Sunday, um, and and should have probably won the game. Um, just had some too many defensive lapses that allowed Cleveland State to make its run. And the other part of this, unfortunately, um, when Darius is not on the floor, it takes away from your defense as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the other thing—you lose a guy. That can, that can get a steal and take it to the other end and turn it into two points. So now, you know, you lose, you lose that veteran leadership and that, that ability to kind of know where Cleveland State's going to run its offense. You know, he, he neutralizes, let's say, a Craig Bodewan of Cleveland State or, or their other off-guard, Trey Gomillion. He, he kind of neutralizes that. Um, so, yeah, no, it makes a difference on both ends of the floor. Uh, it, it's you know you're, you're talking about it. Coach Calhoun talked about it during his radio show last night, and even during the broadcast 
uh, post game show on Saturday and Sunday. You know, he goes, let's let's be honest, you're you're losing a, a Horizon League first team, all you know, first team all all league selection. So it's not like you're losing a bench player. You're losing one of the top five players in the league. So obviously it's going to have its you know it's going to have its problems and, and it's going to leave a hole in your lineup. Um, I thought our guys played extremely well on Sunday and were able to kind of overcome that loss um, in the game uh, in the game at Cleveland State, you know, in, in the rematch. Rob Schmidt joining a, uh, joining me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. Now, Rob, we've talked about this with COVID. Uh, now you're looking at playing the same team on back to back uh, venues, uh, and this month it will be Friday and Saturday. Uh, and and obviously you, you you wonder how many times uh, teams are going to be able to pull off a sweep. Well, Cleveland State has done it not once but twice. Uh, they're off to a four and zero start, and and this weekend was interesting in that there were four uh, four venues played. YSU played Cleveland State, Green Bay played Wright State, Oakland played Detroit, Robert Morris played uh, Purdue Fort Wayne. The only venue in which it was split was Robert Morris and uh, Purdue Fort Wayne. Uh, Purdue Fort Wayne actually won uh, the second game after Robert Morris uh, won the first game. In the other three venues, Oakland swept Detroit, Wright State swept Green Bay, Cleveland State swept Youngstown State. So for YSU, they're now going to have to sweep someone to make up for the two consecutive losses that they had against Cleveland State over the weekend. Now, the good news for Youngstown State, Wright State comes to town, and I'm sorry, uh, Green Bay comes to town, and they're looking for their first win of the season. They're not even looking for their first conference win. They're looking for their first win of the season at 0-8. This would be a pretty good candidate for Youngstown State to get a two-game sweep, being that these two games are going to be played in the friendly confines of Big League. Well, anytime you're at home, and, and you, you know what you had mentioned is, is very true, anytime you're at home with this current format, you have to win them both. If you're going to be a top four team, now if you, if you want to be a team that's going to be in the middle of the pack or you're rebuilding, then you go for splits. But if you're going to be a top four team, and, and more importantly a top three team, you've got to win all of your home games. And, you know, when we talked last week, the reason that YSU and Northern Kentucky ended up being a split, uh, very similar to, to Robert Morris and Purdue Fort Wayne, and in all honesty, you know, it could have been us at Cleveland State, even though it wasn't, depending on how closely matched up your two teams are. Because if it's a, if it's a decided difference, like Wright State and Green Bay, and Green Bay fought really hard, they ran out of gas in the second half of both games at Wright State, um, or they could have pulled off a major upset, but they just didn't have enough firepower, and they were missing one of their better players, Josh Jefferson, with a shoulder injury. So um, don't know if he'll be back for the, for the weekend series here against Youngstown State, but his loss, much like Quisenberry, made a big difference for Green Bay. But when, when teams are evenly matched, like we were against Northern Kentucky, in all honesty, the way we were against Cleveland State, and Robert Morrison, Purdue, Fort Wayne, schools like that, you're going to see some splits. Um, Oakland, Oakland and Detroit, but Mercy could have very well have been a split. Oakland had to overcome a, a late deficit and pull the game off in overtime at the buzzer. And they did the same thing on Sunday. Uh, the game was tied at 80, and they hit, I'm, try, I'm trying to relive it in my mind, they hit a three with about a second or seven-tenths of a second left. Um, and, and they buried a three, and, and they won the game in regulation, or that one was going to overtime. Because I really think Detroit Mercy and, and Oakland are pretty evenly matched. So they were able to win the game at the last second both days. Um, but, you know, in a series like this weekend, it, you know, we should – we on paper we would look like we're the better team, and, and that's why you need to – you've got to win them both this weekend. You really do. Rob Schmidt joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Look, as much as uh, it pains me to say this because they're in our conference, uh, you know, we sat back and said, hey, Youngstown State, they're, they're going to be a uh, top four team, or at least a lot of people believe this is a top four, top three team. 
not many people have given Cleveland State a whole lot of respect. I think there were some folks that said, hey, they could be they could be a, a, a sleeper in all of this. Uh, they're now 4-0, and and they just got done beating Youngstown State two times. Cleveland State is going to be a factor in this league. Well, I said that. I said that to the incoming commissioner Julie Rowe Lash, um, you know, during the off season when when we had some Horizon League meetings, and and I said, you know, the team that scares me is Cleveland State, and and I knew, you know, Dennis Gates is going to be a very good coach if he isn't already. He's a, he's a solid coach in this league. He had a lot of players returning. Um, you know, I knew they had the Des Moines Hodge kids coming in, um, but they had a lot of kids returning. And they weren't flashy a year ago. They really didn't have a great offense. But they played hard all the time, and they had a very good defense. Um, I, you know, Dark Horse was a good, a good name to put on them because they weren't the sexy pick um, because they didn't have enough scoring. Well, over the weekend, you had a chance to see. They've got three guys that can score now. And the Tory Patton kid has come on in league play. Didn't play very well in the non-league games, but before league games, uh, the kid's done very well. He transferred to Cleveland State from Akron a couple of years ago. He's been a Penguins killer. Last year, he had a career-high 25 points against us. In the two games this weekend, uh, he had a big game on Saturday and then turned it on in the second half Sunday after we shut him out. So um, he's, a, he's a noted scorer. The Des Moines Hodge kid, you know, he's the one that put up 46 on Purdue Fort Wayne. He was solid over the weekend. He had 14 points in both games, only had one three in each of the two games. Um, so he didn't really shoot it very well, but he's got quick hands, come up with a lot of steals that lead to easy baskets for Cleveland State. And Trey Gomillion's become the veteran that they, you know, that they expected from a year ago. So they've got three solid scores now. And they've got some, they've got some guys um, you know, that, can, that can defend. They're not great scores, but they've got some guys off the bench who can defend. If they can get Al Javon Eichelberger back, who played a little on Sunday, but looked like he might have re-aggravated his foot injury, if they can get him back, he's a he's a preseason Horizon League second team pick, um, six eight, uh, really kind of emerged a year ago as one of the top players in the league. If they can get him back, you know, much like YSU and, and even Green Bay, if you can keep getting healthy and getting better, and I think Coach Calhoun's got the right attitude, um, despite being one and three. What you need to do right now is, with, with the way this whole COVID thing is, you've got to get better game by game because where it's all going to come down to is the tournament. So you didn't have a lot of off-season workouts. You didn't have you know preseason practice. So now your freshmen are learning virtually baptism by fire. So by the time we get to late January and February, this you know the YSU team could look completely different. Um, but you got to keep getting better, Ron. You know that's that's what's on the table for this weekend. And the other thing that I, I think Youngstown State's going to have to do, and, and obviously it, it goes without saying, you win your games at home. You you got to you've got to uh-huh. protect home field, home court in this in this aspect. But if you're playing a bottom half team on the road, you got to take both of those games if you want to be a conference champion this year. No, you're right. And, and you know you said it earlier. So you you've given one away. So now you got to go back and find one. Um, so does that mean, you know, do you, you have to sweep Oakland on the road? Do you have to sweep Robert Morris on the road? Um, does that mean getting a split at Wright State? Yeah, I mean, you've got to go, you've got to go find one. But that also means you cannot have any hiccups at home, and that's that's a lot of pressure, um, you know, for these young men to have to be perfect um, all the time. So you know. That, that's why I think you know I think that the coaching staff has handled it properly by not pressing a panic button and just let's get better each game and, and get these kids some experience because there there could still be some bumps along the way and you expect that. All right, the million dollar question: Darius Quisenberry, he didn't play over the weekend. Uh, is he able to play this weekend? Well, as of today, you know, in Coach Calhoun's news conference, as of today, he's day to day. Still don't know the severity of the ankle. Um, I think you know you, you can't force a player to go out there unless he is 100% mentally comfortable, knowing that his body will respond when he wants to do certain things on the floor. Whether it's quick jumps, whether it's quick pivots, whether it's you know changing momentum and, and you know changing speeds, but you, you can't force a kid to go out if he's not feeling 
up to 100%. So I think it's a matter of, you know, how does how does DQ feel mentally, and does he, does he trust the ankle? So I think it, it's a day-to-day thing. You know, fortunately, today's, you know, only Tuesday, so you still have, you know, you got today, Wednesday, Thursday before he has to play on Friday. So they've, they've still got virtually two and a half days to, um, you know, treat the ankle, see what he does at practice, and then make a, a better decision later in the week. Rob, what, talk a little bit about this Green Bay team. I mean, obviously, they're they're struggling this year. There's no two ways about that. But it's not like they don't have talent on this team. Oh, no. no this, hey, if, if, you're, if you're trying to think that, that because they're 0-8, you're going to win both by 25, you're mistaken because they, they have a new coach in Will Ryan. His dad was Bo Ryan, who coached at Wisconsin. So he's got a lot of that same philosophy. Um, defensively, they're going to be difficult to play. Um, but, again, He's inherited a team that wasn't necessarily his. They were, they were a team under Link Darner that wanted to get up and down the floor and outscore you 97 to 94. And we were in games against Green Bay just like that, whether we would win 98-94 or we would lose 104 to 94. That's what Green Bay wanted to do under Link Darner. They wanted to get up and down the floor. If, if I'm not mistaken, at one time they were one of the the highest ranked teams in the country for amount of possessions that they would have in a game. Um, They weren't a strong defensive team. Well, now you bring a guy who has a completely different philosophy. You know, Will Ryan's more of a defensive minded guy like his dad. Um, You know, they want to play games like they did against Wright State, lower scoring, a little slower pace. You're going to have to shoot the ball from the 10 to 15, you know, foot range. You're going to have to hit your mid mid range jumpers on Friday and Saturday. We've got to be able to knock down some threes to get them away from the basket, but they've got some better players. You know, they've got kids. Amari Davis, last year was the freshman of the year. He is hes legit. He's a first or second team, all Horizon League sele- selection. Um, he's improved his mid-range game. A year ago, the knock on him as a freshman was he really couldn't shoot threes, and he couldn't really do anything outside of 10 feet. Well, he's expanded his zone now. So, you know, that's a kid you have to be conscious of. And then P.J. Pipes is a, is a, is a true knockdown three-point shooter. And he can get hot and he can carry a team. Um, the guy that will be the X factor for Green Bay will be Josh Jefferson. Uh, as I mentioned, the kid from uh, Illinois State, if he's 100%, you know, he's another presence that can score. Um, in fact, I think if I'm not mistaken, and I haven't looked at all the numbers, he's either their top or second leading scorer as of now. So, um, you know, that was a big loss for them over the weekend at Wright. If he returns, they're they're not as they're not as bad as O and says. What they're missing is they're missing some depth. Um, you know, once you get past their big three, it's who's picking up the slack and and how are they adjusting to Will Ryan's defense because. Those kids that were recruited to come there weren't recruited there to play defense. So that's that's a little bit of why they're 0-8 and, and struggling early on. Rob, it sounds to me like a kid like Vargo, uh, some of these other kids that have a, a, a very nice uh, intermediate jump shot, uh, and not necessarily perimeter three-point jump shot, but, but guys that can consistently hit 18 feet, uh, 15, 18-foot jumpers, Seems to me like if if you can nail those jumpers, you're gonna you're gonna fare really really well against Green Bay. Now I think Alex Vargo could be a, a big factor this weekend. I, I you know I like how he's emerging. Um, you know he's fearless, but no, he's a kid um, who's coming off a, a career high 14 points at Cleveland State on Sunday. He's you know he's got that range. Um, you know that, that he should hopefully find some shots to his liking. Um, you know you need Garrett Covington to continue to play well like he did. You know, we, we talked to him yesterday, and I asked him, I said, when did you feel like you had, you know, the flow of the game under control? When were you in that so-called zone? And he, he said, I did a Kobe fadeaway in the lane. So, you know, if he can get comfortable again on the floor and start hitting some mid-range shots, then that's going to help as well. Uh, Michael Acuche has got to start shooting a little bit better from the field, uh, but he has that capability. So I, I think our, it's going to come down to making shots, um, but we've got to defend better. Coach Calhoun will tell you that. Um, the YSU men have to defend better. Uh, you can't let Amari Davis go off for 35 and P.J. Pipes hit you for seven threes on, on Friday. Well, and if DQ's not in the lineup, Bretan Mays is going to have to really step up his game. And not that the freshman hasn't stepped up his game, but you know he's a true freshman. That's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why you want to have Quisenberry in the lineup if he's healthy. 
No, you're right. Freshmen, you know, freshmen are good and bad. You know, you see a lot of highs and lows out of them in their first years. They just try to figure everything out. And, you know, Shamar fouled out of Sunday's game against Cleveland State. That was a big loss. You know, if he stays on the floor down the stretch, you know, where are we at? You know, do we win that game? Um, I, I take our chances. So, um, you know, the, the, the freshmen are up and down. You know, you may see, you know, you may see some of them who looked really good on Sunday kind of flatten out Friday before they, they emerge again on Saturday. So, yeah, that's what the freshmen, it's kind of a mixed bag of nuts, to tell you the truth. And it's going to be an interesting time. Uh, unfortunately, there's no fans allowed at Big League uh, for this weekend. Uh, moving forward after this weekend, what is uh, the protocol at Youngstown State? Are we going to have fans, or has is that a bridge that we haven't crossed quite yet? No, the presidents of the respective universities here in the Horizon League uh, still have to get together again after the first of the new year um, and then make their decision moving forward. Now, they could meet next week and say, okay, let's extend, let's extend this no fans allowed through the end of January, and uh, let's go revisit it again January 30th and see where we're at for the final month of the regular season. If I had to guess, that's going to be my guess. Um, but I don't know for sure. I'm not privy to that. Uh, but the athletic directors and the presidents, um, you know, we'll get a chance to speak, and then they'll have a vote on it, I believe, next week uh, to see where they're at. Um, but uh, I got a feeling, and you know, I think enough. I think enough athletic directors want fans that you could see no fans for January, and let's go revisit it again for February. Well, we got a doubleheader at Beagley, and and hopefully everyone is going to be able to uh, to listen or see the contest, if you will. Uh, the girls are going to be playing Wright State. Uh, the guys are going to be playing Green Bay. Uh, the girls' game starts at 1 o'clock on Friday and Saturday. The guys will start at 4 o'clock on Friday and Saturday. And hopefully we get four wins in the uh, in the W column, uh, two for the girls, two for the guys, and the men and the women, excuse me. Uh, and, and, then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Sure would make a good weekend. And then if your Bills could win, You'd be, you'd be set. Well, listen, I mean, it, while we're broadcasting the game, if Notre Dame can upset Alabama, you won't be able to take the smile off of my face for at least, I don't know, a few weeks. I'm well, just, now you've gone too far. Well, now, I, I, now, I, you, I, now yeah. you're asking. Yeah, yeah, now I'm asking for something that's probably impossible, even though I, I tried to explain to Santa, look, I'm a, a pretty decent guy. Can you at least, you know, give me Notre Dame over Alabama? And he looked at me and said, kid, uh, that's not my department. That's a uh, higher power. I, I can't I can't <laughs> even handle that one. Hey, let me let me ask you in the month of January, how many uh, potential doubleheaders are we looking at with the YSU <laughs> men and women, Rob? As of right now, there are three on the schedule. Um, and you know what? Let me – there are three uh, double headers between the men and women. The first one, obviously, this weekend, the first and second. Um, and then I think it's, uh, there's another one, the 22nd and 23rd. I think that is that it. Um, let me see if I can find those here. I got them right here for you. Uh, but there are three on the schedule. So you've got – yeah, January 1st and 2nd, 22nd and 23rd, and then February 19th and 20th. February 19th and 20th. There you go. Yep. Yep. All right. Three double headers. All right, Rob. Always a pleasure, sir. Thanks, Ron. You're Talk welcome. You Have a good New Year. All right, you as well, sir. Rob Schmidt, the voice of the YSU men's uh, basketball program, checking in on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. We'll take a timeout and be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions, reminding you that it is open enrollment for Medicare. Now through December 7th, those who qualify can visit our local independent agency by calling us at 330-953-3722 or visiting us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student athletes in the Valley. Attention all football fans. If you can't see your team play, come and dine with us and watch it live at Boardman, Canfield, or Cortland. Or staying at home, we'll deliver right to your door. That's Coca's Pizza. We serve it hot. 2020 will be a season like we've never seen before, but 21 Sports and YSN will be there for every key moment. The plays, the players, and the stories that will headline this season. Delivered by 21 Sports and YSN.
Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is here, so it's all hands on deck to make sure your plan still meets your needs for 2020. Call us today. Uh, you may find yourself in some difficulty this winter. Don't get whacked by high heating bills. Call Michael at MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Michael is a trusted friend who will be able to help you with many things, like getting a 95% high-efficiency furnace this winter from Rood. Michael relies on Rood. So should you. Call MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning for a free estimate, 330-259-0486, and take care of your heating and air situation. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my A-frame truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point, presented by MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. And uh, also presented by Greenwood Chevrolet, Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. If you're in the market for a new or used automobile, do check out the great folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. After all, they uh, have an unbelievable sales department, a great finance department, and a really, really, really great service department. So you, all, all the bases are covered. Uh, if you're in the market for a new or slightly used automobile, Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town, the place to go. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business, 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. All right, again, uh, the Steelers have decided that they are going to sit Ben Roethlisberger uh, the final game of the regular season. Uh, the Steelers really didn't have a bye week per se. Uh, they they did, but they didn't. What the hell's going on with this microphone? Good Lord. That's a little bit better. Uh, they did, but they didn't. Uh, they, they had a bye week three weeks into the season. and they, they played three games, and because Tennessee screwed them, out of what was supposed to be their bye week, October the 25th. Instead, uh, they, they were supposed to have played the Titans on the 4th. They had to cancel the game because Tennessee had that COVID BS. Uh, and, and then they had to play the game on the Steelers' bye week, October the 25th. So instead of having a bye week, which would have been – uh, you already played three games, four, five, six. So six games into the season, instead of having the bye week in week seven, you had your bye week in week four. So in essence, the Steelers have played 12 consecutive games without a bye week instead of having six games played. There's your bye week. And now you've played uh, nine straight games instead of 12. So that's the, the biggest reason why Roethlisberger is sitting down. Okay, I want to flip this switch a little bit to um, to the Browns for a second. Friend of mine, and a uh, uh, he will be a friend of the show uh, next year. I got to get Anthony on board. Anthony Alford, uh, he uh, he works uh, up in Cleveland. Uh, good friend and uh, colleague, and he tweeted something out about ten minutes ago. And, and I'm I'm curious, Browns fans, if you feel the same way. I mean, let, me, let me read the tweet. And then you hit me up on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline at 330-886-0813. And let me know if you feel the same way. Here's Anthony's tweet. If the Browns lose this Sunday, my season grade will drop from an A to a C minus. Now, I'm prefacing all of this by they don't make the playoffs if they lose. So let me read this again. 
assuming that the Browns do not make the playoffs with a loss to the Steelers. Keep that in mind. If the Browns lose this Sunday, my season grade will drop from an A to a C-. minus. Still passing due to winning 10 games, but bombing the final exam. I'm curious. Real, real curious about this. I mean, let's throw the cards on the table for a second. If you're a Browns fan, look, I even said at the beginning of the year, nine wins, ten would be ideal. Nine wins is probably what you're going to get. Ten would be ideal. Eleven, a whole bunch of things would have to go right. Uh, you may be a playoff team. Pretty good chance you're not a playoff team, but you could possibly get into the playoffs. And lo and behold, here we are, one game left into the season. The Browns have 10 wins. All right, 10 wins is solid. You know, at the beginning of the year, I said nine wins, probably nine wins. 10 wins, you've done pretty well for yourself. 11 wins and a playoff berth. Oh, man, now you've really, really done well for yourself. Okay, you get 10 wins. You beat Pittsburgh, you get 11 wins, and you get a playoff. And as I said before the season started, 11 wins and a playoff berth, woof, you've really, really done well. Well, that was at the beginning of the year. Now here we are, 10 wins. Do you really lower your grade from an A to a C minus? I mean, I definitely lower the grade. There's no two ways about that. I mean, obviously, you're 10 and 5. Your, your situation is pretty perfect. You're going up against a backup quarterback. And let's be honest. Last year, the Steelers had Mason Rudolph quarterbacking most, if not all, of the year, with the exception of a game or so. And the Steelers were a 500 team, by and large. Not a very good team without Ben. So it's set up. I mean, you know, Mason Rudolph, he's not going to be, he's not going to be, uh, um, you know, he's, he, people are not going to look at him and say, oh, that's Ben Roethlisberger. No, no, it isn't. He's not going to really be, you know, mistaken for Ben anytime soon. And he's quarterback in the team. Now, if the Browns lose this game, obviously, it's disappointing. I mean, and, and if they missed the playoffs because they lost this game, I mean, it really is disappointing. But do you really drop your record or your grade from an A to a C minus? I mean, I kind of like what Anthony's saying here, especially at the end passing due to winning 10 games, but the equivalent of bombing your final exam. I don't know if I would go to a C minus, but it, it would certainly be a really, really crappy ending of what you were hoping to have, which was a playoff berth. So let, let me ask, if you're a Browns fan, do you go along with that theory? If you lose to the Steelers and don't make the playoffs, do you go from, hey, man, if I'm giving a grade to this team, that's solid A, and, and, and now you see the Browns lose to the Steelers, don't make the playoffs, that A suddenly becomes a C-? minus. I would probably go C. I don't know if I would go C- minus or not, but again, given what the season given how you've you've seen the first 14 games of the season your expectation level is a little bit bigger i mean i'll i'll say it you know when i was prior to the steelers game on sunday night football as a bills fan i had said all right listen they're playing the steelers and, and the game is going to be in orchard park doesn't matter if it's at orchard park or pittsburgh i mean you're playing the steelers you're playing one of the better teams in your conference if you can beat this team my expectation level is going to be a whole lot higher prior to that game i had sat back and said look if the bills can win their division and win a playoff game be among the top four you don't win in the uh, divisional weekend. You, you don't win uh, the, the conference semifinal game. Uh, okay. I mean, it, you know, I mean, it's disappointing, but, you know, given the fact that this team didn't win their division, 
uh, you know, it's it, it, the expectation level was a little bit lower. The way the Bills beat the Steelers, beat them by double digits, the way they held the Steelers down, granted the Steelers weren't playing some really good football, but, yeah, you took that win and how they were playing, especially defensively. Okay, now my expectation levels have risen. Yeah, all right, I, I want my team in the AFC championship game, bare minimum. Uh, you, you know, now obviously if they're playing Kansas City, I mean, that's going to be a tough game because Kansas City is the defending Super Bowl champs, and, and yeah. My expectation level for the Bills is a whole lot bigger now than what it was at the beginning of the year based upon how well they've performed. And it's the same thing with the Browns. Look, I mean, I'm sure there were some Browns fans that were quietly optimistic. All right, nine wins, ten wins, uh, if, if we're fortunate. If we possibly get a playoff appearance, man, I'll be a happy camper. Yeah, the team's probably not going to do very well once you get into the playoffs because it's not a finished product, but – we should be okay. And then the season starts, and this team is starting to play some pretty damn good football. Huh. All right, well, uh, no, I, now I – give me 11 wins. Give me the, the playoffs. And, and I'm not just talking about, you know, one and done. Depending on who we're playing, no, 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 no. I think we, can be a, we could be a team that gets into the divisional playoffs depending on who we're playing. So from that perspective, especially now looking at the fact the Steelers are playing with a backup quarterback on Sunday, a a quarterback that the Browns beat in Cleveland last year, I I don't know. I mean, do you have higher expectations now? I mean, you should. But if the Browns lose on Sunday and you finish 10 and 6, it's about where you thought you would end your season anyway it's it's kind of you know you saw the you saw how the season was going and now your expectation level goes up a little bit based upon the fact that you know your team was playing well I mean after all this team beat Tennessee this team beat Indianapolis Uh, two teams that are going to begin to the playoffs this year at least barring a disaster one of those teams will be in the playoffs and perhaps both if if certain things go right. I mean, your expectation level clearly was up a little bit. I don't know if I would say A to a C minus, but that that's that's an interesting, a very, very interesting uh take from uh from my buddy Anthony. And uh I'm curious how many people are going to fall into that realm where if the Browns not only don't make the playoffs, they lose to the Steelers with a backup quarterback and you fail to make the playoffs. Do you suddenly say, Oh, you know, this, this team that I've rated an a, yeah, it's now a C minus the equivalent of bombing your final exam. And yeah, you're, you're, you went from an honor roll student to now an ordinary student. Be curious to hear what what Browns fans have to say about that. 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. I, I will say, as a Bills fan, as I mentioned, uh, my expectation level is a whole lot higher uh, than at the beginning of the year. You know, at the beginning of the year, I said, hey, if we can win the division, win a playoff game, Whatever happens after that is gravy. Whatever happens after that is gravy. I mean, it just, I'm not, I, I, would it be nice if this team goes to the Super Bowl? And and I've said this at the beginning of the year. Would it be nice if this team went to the Super Bowl? Of course, obviously. Realistically, no. Yeah, absolutely not. There's teams that are ahead of the Bills at this point. And now, mm, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking at this a little bit differently. There isn't a team in the AFC that is ahead of the Bills right now, with the exception of Kansas City. And uh, to be honest with you, now, since I've seen 15 games and the Bills are 12-3 and three and could very easily have been 13-2 and two or 14-1 and one had COVID not happened or a Hail Mary had not happened, but it is what it is. 
my expectations are a whole lot higher. Now, I expect this team to be in the AFC championship game. And I expect this team to perform in the AFC championship game. Now, if they win, okay, it's gravy, especially if it's Kansas City. But if Kansas City were to be upset, two seed, you're looking at an AFC title game in Orchard Park. Um, I expect the Bills to go to the Super Bowl. If Kansas City is eliminated somehow, some way, and the Bills don't have to make a trip to Arrowhead in the AFC title game, and the AFC title game is in Buffalo, assuming, of course, the Bills hang on to the two seed, I'm expecting this team to go to the Super Bowl. But my expectation level at the beginning of the year, nowhere near this. Nowhere near it, because I, you know, again, I, I don't know what the hell this team was going to be about. I mean, if my expectation was, okay, win the division, win a playoff game, because you'll have a home game, first home game in 25 years, and after that, it's gravy. And like Cleveland fans, at the beginning of the year, you, you had smaller expectations. I mean, if you're true to yourself, most of you thought, this is a 9-win or a 10-win team. You, if you get the playoffs, that's gravy. Well, now, 10-5, and five, you've beaten two playoff teams or two teams that should be in the playoffs, and, and hopefully uh, both teams will be in the playoffs, not at the expense of the Browns, of course. Your expectation level is a little bit bigger. It has to be. If not, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. But with the higher expectation level comes the larger disappointment if your team craps on themselves. So I'm curious, if the Browns were to lose to Rudolph, a backup quarterback, and lose your playoff berth, does your yearly grade with the Browns go drastically into the nether region? Uh, a to C minus that 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 actually the more I think about it sounds pretty damn close. I, I still would say A to C. I don't know if I would go to C minus, but it, it it's in that area because this would be the equivalent of bombing your final exam. There's no two ways about it, especially now that Roethlisberger's not playing. Hell, if Cleveland can't beat Pittsburgh with a backup quarterback, frankly, you don't deserve to be in the playoffs. You just don't. So the expectation level should be pretty high right now for the Browns. It, it absolutely, it should be higher than what it was at the beginning of the year. Absolutely, no two ways about it. Just like my expectation level with the Bills, good God, it is way higher than what it was at the beginning of the year because they've exceeded expectations. Now you're like, well, well this team's won 12 games, and if they don't sit any regulars against the Dolphins, pretty good chance they can win their 13th game be on a, what, a seven or eight game winning streak and had it not been for the craziness at Arizona, a 10 game winning streak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. This is interesting. Very interesting. Mike Tomlin had uh, made a point to say that uh, some regulars, plural, would be sitting. Right now, the only person that we know of is Roethlisberger. We'll see what happens later in the week. I mean, the game's on Sunday. Got a long way to go uh, prior to the game on Sunday. Uh, the news that broke uh, pertaining to uh, professional sports in Cleveland, Governor DeWine uh, is expected to make an announcement that 10% of the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse can now be uh, filled by fans. So essentially 2,000 fans can now see the Cavaliers play. Uh, don't know when that announcement is going to be official, uh, but according to uh, according to Tom Withers from the Associated Press, uh, 2,000 fans will be welcomed to Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse when um, when the Cavaliers 
uh, at, at some point in time, Cavaliers will have 2,000 fans at, at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. They'll be allowed to have 2,000 fans. Given how well the Cavs are playing right now, uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'll take that. Uh, by the way, Cavs in action tonight at uh, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. They're going to be playing the New York Knicks. Uh, one other bit of news with the Cavs. Kevin Love will be out for at least four weeks with a uh, strained calf. So he and Dylan Windler uh, are both out for at least four weeks. Windler with a broken hand and uh, Kevin Love with a strained calf. Uh, so the two guys that have uh, unfortunately made a uh, reputation for themselves among being injury prone. Uh, their injuries have um, once again derailed their chances of going on to the floor. So Windler and Love will both be out at least four weeks. That sucks. But the way the Cavs are playing, uh, man, pretty solid. Pretty solid indeed. All right, we'll take a final timeout, be back with more. It's a Tuesday edition of Running Point. We'll get through the uh, the schedule uh, on the network tonight. And I know Larry and I are going to be at Crestview Rebel Gymnasium for the Crestview Heartland Christian game. We'll get the other games uh, to you and uh, tell you where they are, what time the, the uh, games are going to be, all that and more coming up in a bit. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Baird Brothers remains your source for fine hardwood products. For the time being, we're open for customer pickup only on weekdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. till noon. Place your order online at BairdBrothers.com. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. Armstrong Local Programming has always delivered an exclusive and unique perspective on the very best events your region offers. High school sports, community events, parades, all your favorite shows from Armstrong are now calling the neighborhood channel their home. Watch out and about locally speaking and many other great local shows right here on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Find out everything that the Neighborhood Channel has to offer at armstrongneighborhood.com. Spirit, town pride, local communities. Welcome to the neighborhood. Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a new or pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade. But you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point on YSNLive.com. Here's your uh, games for the rest of the day. 
Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, we have girls basketball from uh, South Range, the uh, holiday classic over at South Range High School. Uh, Boardman will be taking on Akron Hoban in girls basketball. That game will start at roughly 3 o'clock. And then at 5 o'clock, the host school, South Range, will be taking on Nordonia. That is a 5 o'clock start this afternoon. Anthony Hartwig, uh, who we'll uh, have tomorrow on the program, uh, he will be broadcasting both of those games. Uh, Boardman and Hoban at 3 o'clock, South Range and Nordonia at 5 o'clock. Triangular Junior High Wrestling match uh, coming up at 4 o'clock at Edison. Uh, Edison, Minerva, and Southern in a triangular uh, junior high wrestling uh, match. Uh, that begins at 4 o'clock. Varsity wrestling from Edison at 6 o'clock tonight. Edison will be uh, wrestling Wellsville. The match starts at 6 o'clock. And then a plethora of boys basketball. Seven games uh, on tap. Actually, six games on tap. And I believe... Uh, I believe the uh, LeBray uh, uh, Camel game is out. I believe LeBray is hosting Mineral Ridge. So there are six games on the network tonight. Uh, all of these games have a scheduled start of 7 o'clock. Keep in mind, all of these games uh, that have a scheduled start at 7 o'clock, the JVs are in action at 5.30. So uh, JVs start at 5.30 and the JVs, how fast that game uh, ends is going to determine where the game is uh, or what time the game is going to be played. Could be played a little before 7 if the JV game goes quick. Could be a little after 7 if the JV game goes long. Just depends on how many fouls are called, if the game goes into overtime. You know the drill by now. Uh, but the scheduled start, scheduled start is 7 o'clock. Here are the games. Austin Town Fitch will be hosting Alliance. And again, keep in mind, all of these are boys basketball, as boys basketball normally takes the stage on Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, girls basketball Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, Fitch will be hosting Alliance. Beaver Local hosting East Liverpool. These two schools are separated by about, I don't know, six miles. Uh, these two schools don't get along. It's it's a pretty pretty uh, intense rivalry. Anytime Beaver Local and East Liverpool get together, uh, that game will be at Beaver Local High School. Canfield will take on Poland. Talking about two teams that don't get along, Canfield will be hosting Poland tonight. Uh, Crestview hosting Heartland Christian. Labray will be hosting N Mineral Ridge. And we had an opportunity at one o'clock today to speak with uh, Tribune Chronicle and Vindicator Sports editor Doug Chapin. And and let me just say this: if you're a Trumbull County school, you should probably get on board with this idea get all of the trumbull county schools on board with this and start playing amongst yourselves three or four times a week for for the time being and, and, and maybe not every single game but by and large these schools should be playing three and four times a week for the first two weeks or so to catch up number one and number two, more importantly, to make sure that you're you're up to speed. And, and you know you can have all the practices in the world, but the the experience is the best teacher. And since you're behind the eight ball already in terms of games played, you might as well just play three or four games a week for the first couple of weeks, and then get back to normal stuff. And you don't necessarily have to play schools from Trumbull County exclusively. I mean, you could play a couple of teams that you would, uh, th that you might deem to be beatable, even though they've played four or five games more than you. Be curious to see what happens. But if I were an AD in a Trumbull County school, I would start reaching out to my Trumbull County brethren uh, to see if, you know, one of those teams wanted to schedule a game uh, as part of three or four games in the span of a week. And do that for a couple of weeks, and now all of a sudden you're six, eight games in and pretty much on, on schedule. Especially, uh, let's fast forward here, next Friday would be what, January the 7th? No, January the 8th, excuse me. 
next Friday would be January the 8th. Okay, so let's say that uh, you're able to schedule three games this week, four games next week. Now you're seven games into the season after January the 8th. That's not bad. Okay, you're, you're, I mean, you're still a little, little bit behind, but not, not really that far behind. Now, unfortunately, trying to schedule three games this week, yeah, good luck with that because you got New Year's Day on Friday. That's, that's a no-go. You're, you're not going to be able to do that. Now, if you did Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and you did three games, okay. New Year's Eve, eh, maybe not. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday, okay. And then you schedule four games the next week, Tuesday, uh, let's say Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And you have a practice on Monday and you practice on Wednesday. And I'm just speaking of basketball. It's not a bad idea. And, and then you get everyone up to speed. I'm just saying. All right, LeBray is going to be hosting Mineral Ridge. Salem is going to be hosting McDonald. I believe this is game three. Game three for McDonald? Somewhere in that vicinity. Anyway, uh, those are the games tonight. And, and again, all of the uh, boys basketball games scheduled to start at seven o'clock, of course, they're in the, uh, they're all at the mercy of how quickly the JV game goes. So there you go. All right, that'll do it for the show. Many, many thanks to Doug Chapin from the Tribune Chronicle and the Vindicator. He calls in every uh, Tuesday at one o'clock. Rob Schmidt uh, calling in on the MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline at two o'clock this afternoon to talk YSU. Again, Penguins in action, uh, doubleheader, men's and women's play. Friday and Saturday, the women will play Friday and Saturday beginning at 1 o'clock. The men will play Friday and Saturday beginning at 4 o'clock. Uh, that'll do it for the show. We'll uh, catch you tomorrow, noon to 3. Uh, Anthony Hardwig will be here. Tomorrow, uh, we will have Brian Driscoll from uh, the IrishBreakdown.com. Uh, Brian Driscoll will preview the national semifinal game Friday afternoon between Notre Dame and Alabama. Uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, we will also uh, have some more of your phone calls, and, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, talk about uh, what is going to be a, a playoff atmosphere in Cleveland, unfortunately, without fans, uh, when the Browns take on the Steelers. Well, we'll have a smattering of fans, but not a lot. All right, that'll do it for the show. Uh, we will talk tomorrow, noon to 3, Running Points, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Have a great rest of the day. See you tonight if you're planning on watching the game on YSNlive.com. Crestview taking on Heartland Christian. That game is supposed to start somewhere around.